in this kingdom of castles, here in Wales, where history prevails and beauty transcends. Something unimaginable has come alive. Sons and daughters, the time has come to ignite the fires within, to fight. Who here will be valiant? Who now will be strong? For the clash of a lifetime has begun. You must prepare for the storms. You'll witness a battle of heroes. Wars waged over gold. Fights between the youth and the wise. Warriors head to head with sinister destroyers. Personal battles where only the strongest can and will survive. We have prepared long and hard for this moment, and this evening is the time to show the world what you are made of. The same world that has gathered upon common ground to see the greatest gladiators around the globe do battle. You want to become immortal. You want to live forever. Well, this is your chance. This is Principality Stadium. You walk on the legendary soils of Cardiff, Wales. And tonight is Clash at the Castle. October the 22nd, and we are live from Cardiff, Wales, Principality Stadium for one of our biggest match cards of 2023. Six championships to be defended, a number one contender spot on the line, and personal grudges to be settled right here on the legendary soils of Cardiff. We welcome you to Clash at the Castle. It is going to be an epic event in this sold out Principality Stadium. Five weeks of anticipation all conclude right here, right now. It is time to kick things off with the number one contendership to the WWE title on the line. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the ring from Colorado Springs, Colorado, weighing in. 73 pounds, the almighty Bobby Lashley. What bigger way to kick off this live premiere event than letting these two monsters free from their cages, set to run at each other like bulls. The almighty Bobby Lashley, the beast incarnate Brock Lesnar, both have showcased their dominance as of late on Monday Night Raw, and especially last month at Unforgiven. These two deserving superstars look to make their way through each other, but only one man can be determined the number one contender for the WWE Championship. The same title that will be defended in your main event tonight between Sheamus and the champion Seth Rollins in a last man standing matchup. A whole lot rides on the line here to kick things off in Cardiff. And the mood just changed because the beast is here in Principality Stadium. The alpha male of our species, Brock Lesnar. And his opponent, 
from Minneapolis, Minnesota, weighing in at 295 pounds, Brock Lesnar. You know we are about to witness a night of epic battles when these two future Hall of Famers are kicking off the show. Bobby Lashley and the Beast Incarnate, Brock Lesnar. You remember what happened last month at Unforgiven in Chicago? Brock Lesnar, Matt Riddle, steel cage matchup where Lesnar absolutely dismantled the original bro. We have not seen Matt Riddle since. And since then, Brock Lesnar has laid out Bobby Lashley not once, but twice, and is looking to run through Lashley for a third time tonight and proclaim his spot at the front of the line for a future WWE Championship opportunity. Two weeks ago on Raw, it was three F5s to the Almighty. This past Monday night, it was a jump from behind and a pull apart brawl on the top of the stage. But tonight it is bell to bell. It is the Beast versus the Almighty and the number one contendership is on the line. And by the sound of it, it sounds like Cardiff Wales is about to become Suplex City. The bell has sounded and Clash at the Castle is underway. Brock Lesnar, Bobby Lashley, these two Monday Night Raw superstars locking horns here on what is going to be an epic night of action. Got to wonder what the strategy is going to be for both Lesnar and Lashley coming into this thing. And one thing Bobby Lashley has got to be sure of is he does not get over Zealous and not let the jumps from Brock Lesnar over the last few weeks frustrate him in the early rounds of this match. You got to come in with a game plan. You got to come in with a strategy. And you got to stay focused on the target at hand when you're in the ring with the beast incarnate Brock Lesnar who is already putting on a showcase of dominance in this opening match. Brock Lesnar is looking to bring that dominance and that display of it from last month at Unforgiven and let it carry in to this matchup with Bobby Lashley here tonight. Already multiple suplex variations by the alpha male of our species who has been on the hunt for the WWE Championship throughout 2023. Lesnar had a chance back in May. Unfortunately, that slipped through his fingers. Now with a couple wins under his belt last month at Unforgiven, two months ago at SummerSlam, defeating Kevin Owens. Brock Lesnar finds himself with an opportunity tonight, but don't think that Bobby Lashley is just going to lay down and allow Brock Lesnar to walk all over him tonight. Lashley has been itching for the same end goal and a big time fall away slam with a little extra emphasis on it, sending Brock Lesnar halfway across the ring. Bobby Lashley a bit on a roll as of as himself as of late. Wait a minute, Lesnar. Swashing Les Lashley in the corner. Not allowing Bobby to take control, but there's Lashley looking to get back into this matchup. Two weeks ago, Bobby Lashley with that win over Carmelo Hayes that was hot off the heels of his win against Carmelo last month and Unforgiven as well. And now he's got this bear hug in on Brock Lesnar. Not sure if we've ever seen Brock Lesnar tap up or give out, give up, excuse me, inside of the ring, but when you're in there with Bobby Lashley, as we know, one of Lashley's special submissions inside of that ring, the Hurt Lock could be the answer for victory tonight. You see Brock Lesnar not wasting any time. I will not be surprised if this match starts to turn in to a back and forth between these two animals. Big time press slam, which to somebody like Brock Lesnar would seem surprising, but when it's coming from the almighty Bobby Lashley, we expect nothing less. Lashley showcasing his strength in the middle of Principality Stadium. Don't take your eyes off the Beast Incarnate. That's the last thing you want to do when you're in there with a former 10-time world champion in Brock Lesnar. Just like that, Lesnar takes back the momentum in this opening bout tonight. Now knocking Lashley off his feet. As we were talking about, Lesnar been on the hunt for the WWE title all year long, but so is Bobby Lashley. Back at SummerSlam two months ago, Lashley was in the main event, Fatal 4-Way, competing for the WWE title. Was not pinned or made to submit on that night, but did ultimately lose the matchup but this could finally be the opportunity that Lashley has been searching for to get back to the front of the line for the WWE title. Oh, Lesnar. And you see, even in the early moments of this matchup, the fatigue starting to set in. Lashley not even able to catch himself off running into the turnbuckles there. But look at the strength by Lashley 
A reversal by Lesnar and a chop block. Simple yet effective maneuver to take the almighty off his feet. And Lesnar looking to kick things into high gear. Ready to throw Lashley from pillar to post in order to get the one, two, and especially the three. Lashley's got to be careful, man. Especially when you're in there with Brock Lesnar. You can't be overzealous, as we talked about earlier. You can't let Lesnar find a window of opportunity. But quite frankly, he might not need it. Brock Lesnar, one of the most dominant superstars in WWE history, and it's because of the display that we are seeing in that ring right now. He knows how to destroy his opponents. He knows how to get in their heads before the bell even rings. Lesnar brings an intimidation factor that not many superstars have ever brought to the squared circle. Hard of coming unglued, and wait a minute. Nice counter by Lashley. Oh man, Dominator! Brock Lesnar down, but is Lesnar out? Into the cover, not just yet. Lashley got the two off the Dominator. A great moon, great maneuver, great wherewithal by the Almighty, but unfortunately not enough to keep down the Beast Incarnate. I was about to say damage at least might be done. There's a nice counter there. Lashley trying to get back into this matchup. Little bit of sense of urgency. And a little bit of a streak of maneuvers from Brock Lesnar moments ago. The Almighty's got to keep his foot on the gas pedal. One thing we know about Brock, it's one thing to knock him off his feet. It's a whole other thing to keep him there. As Lashley just found out firsthand, just getting leveled by a Mack truck in Brock Lesnar. This is the last thing Bobby Lashley wants, is to see this fight get taken to the outside right now. And a game of cat and mouse. Brock Lesnar grabs a hold and sends Bobby Lashley over the top rope again. Lesnar's wheels are spinning, and I don't think Lashley wants to be on the other end of it. Oh no, off the apron, Brock Lesnar! Throwing caution in the wind. In a sense there, with that high knee, taking Lashley off his feet at ringside. Man, high stakes, high reward in this matchup. Both the Almighty and Brock Lesnar. Especially at this stages in their careers. It's impressive to see them as hungry as ever to get to the top of the mountain on Monday Night Raw and become the WWE Champion. And the road to that gold can start here tonight. Oh no, on the outside of the ring, my goodness! Lesnar laying out Almighty and using his surroundings to his advantage. Referees at a count of six. Brock bringing this thing back between the ropes. And certainly some major damage done as this matchup continues to progress. Bobby Lashley may be in trouble. That Dominator may be one of the last ditch efforts out of the Almighty. Fatigue starts to set in a lot earlier than it normally would when you're in there with Brock Lesnar. There's a nice pick of the ankles by Lashley there. Let's see if he can take advantage. Lesnar getting to his feet. Here comes Lashley. Oh, both men going for blows. Belly to belly, not just yet. Lesnar counters. You don't want to go for a suplex against the suplex machine of Monday Night Raw and Lesnar giving Lashley a taste of his own medicine. Suplex City has come to Principality Stadium and Cardiff, Wales. And Lashley, oh man, is hurt. Lashley is feeling the hurt of Brock Lesnar in this match. Once again, ran into the turnbuckles, left with no choice but to roll to the outside and trying to create some distance. And Brock Lesnar, you see, talk one thing we've mentioned a couple of times throughout this match, not being overzealous. That works for Brock Lesnar as well. We've seen Lashley go the distance with Carmelo Hayes on Monday Night Raw in a recent memory. Just talking about some of Lashley's most recent contests. Lesnar's done his scouting report. He knows that Lashley can go the distance. Brock Lesnar has come in tonight with a game plan and certainly we're going to execute it to perfection. Now he's got Lashley on the top rope as if Lesnar needs to go up there. Sending Lashley for an amusement park ride. Damn near to the other side of the squared circle. And Lesnar, I believe this is his first cover of the matchup. Lashley getting the shoulder up, but not too much emphasis off that kick out by Lashley. The Almighty is hurt. Brock Lesnar has got this animal wounded. 
I do not like things. Wait a minute. Oh, no. Things about to go from bad to worse. Kimura locked. Locked in by Lesnar. Dead center of the squared circle. This could be all she wrote. Bobby Lashley's already hurt. Could be risking career-ending injury here. Oh, great counter by Lashley. But a roll out from it. And absolutely giving Lesnar this time a taste of his own medicine off the clothesline. And now the hurt lock locked in by Lashley. Is Brock Lesnar gonna tap out? Is he gonna give up? Or will he simply pass out from the pain? Who wants it more? Lashley wrenching it in. Oh, but Lesnar, look at the beast breaking the hold. There is not many people on planet Earth who are gonna be able to do that. And there's not many people who are gonna do this to Bobby Lashley. The F5 by Brock Lesnar. Lashley is down. And the beast into the cover. And he almost became the number one contender, but the almighty's heart is still pumping. This is how you kick off a live premiere event. You ain't gonna see this action anywhere else, but right here tonight, Sunday, October the 22nd, 2023, Cardiff, Wales, Principality Stadium, Clash at the Castle. And look at Lashley. Sense of urgency, going for the hurt lock again. This thing may become a test of endurance between the Almighty and the Beast. And does Lashley have more than Lesnar left in the tank? Lashley was able to survive that F5, but how much more has he got left as Brock's able to roll out of a second hurt lock? Business is picking up in your opening contest tonight as Lashley takes Lesnar off his feet, at least for the moment. And Lashley, uncharacteristic for the Almighty here. Heading to the top rope. This is not something we see Lashley do too often. Dropping the double axe hammer on Lesnar. And falls it over the elbow. Lashley is starting to tap into some of that grittiness. Lesnar this time is on the run. On the outside, Lashley over the top rope. What a dive over the ropes. Taking down the beast at ringside. That tells you how much Bobby Lashley wants this victory tonight. Laying out Lesnar on the outskirts of the squared circle and not letting the foot off the gas pedal just yet. That is the first time in this match we have seen Lesnar on the run, creating some distance, trying to catch his breath. But now it's Bobby Lashley pushing the pace, throwing the heat on Lesnar. And Lesnar's got to get out of it. Lashley can't win the matchup out here, but he can certainly do some damage to the Beast Incarnate, who is now on the run back inside the squared circle. I don't know how these men are still throwing heavy hands in this match after everything we have already seen in the last 10 minutes or so since the opening bell. Brock Lesnar able to knock Lashley down that time. You see the fatigue starting to set in. Lashley not even able to get to his feet right now, nor defend himself as Brock Lesnar just using his boots and beating down Lashley. Nothing pretty about it. Simple, effective. And now he's got Lashley rolling to the outside. You see both these men are almost playing a little bit of mind games with each other. And it's almost a mutual unsaid respect rolling to the outside, creating that distance. You were telling your opponent that you're hurt when you do that. Lashley with the haymaker to Lesnar. Go behind, could have been going for a third and possibly the final hurt lock. Lesnar able to avoid, and down goes Lashley. You see the pace has started to slow down a little bit. These guys were throwing some live rounds a few minutes ago. But there you see how much endurance Lashley has left. Just his body getting sent lifeless over the top rope and down to the floor of Principality Stadium. Lashley is hurt. And Lesnar is looking to pick the bones. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Not on the outside. Lesnar with an F5 at ringside to Bobby Lashley. Tordiff Wales is in awe of these two monsters and the fire they are throwing at each other tonight. Lesnar just laying out Bobby Lashley at F5 on the outside of the ring and could be trying to resort to a count-out victory, although Lashley is somehow starting to reel. 
Lashley making his way back into the ring, but how much does he possibly have left? I will never count out the almighty as he hangs up Brock Lesnar on the top rope. And again, look at Lashley. Look at how bad he wants this victory. On the middle buckle. Lashley dropping an elbow. Does not get what he wants that time as Lesnar was able to roll out of the way. Kick to the gut. Oh, and Brock Lesnar. That was a vicious knee to the rib cage. That could knock the breath out of you for multiple minutes at a time. If not completely shatter a rib. And you see that F5 has completely knocked the wind out of Bobby Lashley. Maybe a sense of urgency, maybe a little bit of a shift in gear, but realistically, how much does Lashley still have left in the tank? Down goes Lesnar in the corner. I gotta be honest, from an unbiased perspective, I'm surprised this match is still going and still really reaching the distance it is, but here comes a cover here. Oh, and a kick out by Lesnar. That was a close call. Lashley almost had it. Oh, wait a minute. Not again, Lashley. Go into the outside, but you can't go to the well repeatedly with the same maneuver against somebody like Brock Lesnar. Both these men throwing caution in the wind to no avail, doing damage to their own bodies. All for the means of becoming the number one contender. It's not as if this match is for the WWE Championship. This is just to earn a shot at the WWE Championship. We will see Seth Rollins and Sheamus, last man standing in your main event for said gold. But right now, Lashley taking things to the sky and dropping a monstrous elbow on the lower back of Brock Lesnar. Oh, wait a minute. Lesnar's hurt, and Lashley spitting him out, face first off the canvas. A dominator variation. And that'll do it. He knocked the beast out cold. Lashley is number one contender. My goodness, what a way to kick things off at Clash at the Castle. Brock Lesnar, Bobby Lashley, beating the living daylights out of each other. But in the end, the almighty survives and Lashley takes his spot at the front of the line for the WWE Championship. Here is your winner, the almighty Bobby Lashley. Well, real recognizes real. And after Lesnar f 5 Lashley three times two weeks ago on Raw, Lashley knew he had to bring his best tonight, and boy did he ever. He pushed through everything the Beast had to throw at him, and in the end, that man, the Almighty, is the face and the spot at the front of the line for the number one contendership. It's a rare Saturday Night production featuring some of the best from Raw and SmackDown. It's coming your way Saturday, November the 4th at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. The Road to Survivor Series will make a pit stop in Milwaukee for the return of Saturday night's main event. Don't miss this exciting night of action. Live November 4th at Saturday night's main event. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. That is for the WWE Intercontinental Championship. The first of six championships to be decided here tonight at Clash at the Castle. It is from Monday Night Raw, and the Intercontinental title is on the line. And you want to talk about momentum, look no further then the number one contender, the challenger, the big strong boy, Tyler Bate. The first ever NXT United Kingdom champion. It's gotta feel good to come back to familiar soils for Tyler Bate. And you gotta wonder if he is feeling the hometown, or at least home field advantage here tonight in a sense here in Cardiff, Wales. And talking about that momentum, Tyler Bate earning his number one contendership in a four-way elimination match a number of weeks ago on the season premiere of Monday Night Raw, eliminating all three other challengers, pinning them all inside the squared circle. 
Apollo Crews, Kofi Kingston, Shinsuke Nakamura, all defeated by that man in the purple and green, Tyler Bate. And the biggest reason that we got to pin momentum on Tyler Bate is the fact that he owns not one, but two recent victories over the WWE Champion, the man who will compete in your main event, Seth freaking Rollins. One coming in a one-on-one -on -one match a few weeks ago on Raw, and then just six nights ago, Tyler Bate and Sheamus defeating Seth Rollins and this man in a tag team main event. Here comes the pompous, the arrogant, the loudmouth, or as he would like to say, the megastar, the intercontinental champion, L.A. Knight. L.A. Knight won that title back in July at Money in the Bank. He has successfully defended it over Ilya Dragunov, Cedric Alexander, and Sami Zayn last month at Unforgiven in the midst of a triple threat matchup. L.A. Knight now turns his attention to his newest challenger, Tyler Bate. And with the momentum that Tyler Bate has behind him, the winning streak that he has been on, is that going to be enough to take down L.A. Knight tonight? Will that be the kryptonite to LA Knight's Intercontinental Championship reign? That is the question that is at hand. And I can't think of a more deserving challenger to face LA Knight under these bright lights of Principality Stadium. None other than the big strong boy, Tyler Bate. Here's the first of six championship matches here tonight at Clash of the Castle. Intercontinental Gold's on the line. Let's send things down to the ring for your official match introductions. Introducing the challenger from Dudley, England, weighing in at 175 pounds, Tyler Bates. And his opponent from Hagerstown, Maryland, weighing in at 230 pounds, he is the WWE Intercontinental Champion, LA. Well, here we go. Big fight feel, absolutely, as that Intercontinental Championship is on the line. LA Knight puts the gold up. And is he handing that gold over for the very last time? And are we looking at the new Intercontinental Champion in Tyler Bate? Should be a great matchup coming your way, courtesy of Monday Night Raw, as that championship is on the line. Bell has sounded, we are underway. LA Knight, Tyler Bate for the Intercontinental title. And right off the get-go, the big strong boy showcasing some of that strength. But Tyler Bate, one of the things that makes him so dangerous inside of the ring is his versatile offense. Obviously the strength, that fits in with the nickname. But we have seen Tyler Bate take things to the air on more than one occasion. Very agile, very quick inside of that ring. As for LA Knight, there is a reason he is the Intercontinental Champion, making him by default one of the faces of Monday Night Raw. We have seen Knight go the distance with some of the best of them on Monday Night, especially those first two matches with Ilya Dragunov back in the summer when LA Knight won the Intercontinental title. Cannot take away the effort of LA Knight. He has rised the ranks of Monday Night Raw, started literally from the bottom, and made it to one of the top, top spots, excuse me, throughout this year. I don't think, regardless of Tyler Bates' momentum, his winning streak, I do not think LA Knight is looking to let up on that spot anytime soon. But you gotta believe that the Defiant Knight is a little bit worried coming into this matchup with the hot streak that Tyler Bates has been on. Wait a minute here, Tyler Bates taking LA Knight for a ride. Around, around we go. The Intercontinental Champion's cobweb's gonna be a little loose after this. LA Knight's going to be seeing stars, and I'm not talking about the mega star himself. Down goes LA Knight. That's one way to take down the champion. Bay into the cover, looking for a day's three count. Could have possibly got it there. Can't knock the efforts of Tyler Bate. Champions on the outside. Tope Suicida. There is some of that high risk offense we were referring to for Tyler Bate. Shot out like a cannon in and out of the ring. Tyler Bate, that four-way elimination win on the season premiere of Raw, that got him this spot here tonight. Not one, but two victories, pinfall victories, over the WWE Champion Seth Rollins. Even defeated Akira Tozawa on the Cruiserweight Classic finale. Tyler Bate raising his stock week in, week out over the last month and change on Monday Night Raw. 
But will it lead to an Intercontinental Championship victory tonight? Wait a minute, Tyler Bates going back to the well with what knocked LA Knight on his ass the first time. What is that, 10 times spinning around? I mean, maybe a total of 30, make it possibly 40. At this point, LA Knight's not gonna know where the hell he is. Down goes the champion. Tyler Bates even on spaghetti legs. LA Knight's just trying to get his wits about him right now. Tyler Bates bringing some offense that I don't think the Intercontinental Champion could have possibly scouted. LA Knight has really been on the receiving end of all Tyler Bates' offense so far in this matchup. Very little offense for the Intercontinental Champion himself. Really got to get back into this here. There's a reversal by the champion. Now Tyler Bates down and out off the swing and neck breaker. Bates smart right there, rolling out of the ring, not allowing LA Knight to capitalize. He gets caught off the re-entry. Counter by the number one contender. LA Knight into the ropes this time. Snap German! LA Knight getting dropped right on the back of his dome. And Bates not done. Another German suplex into the bridge to win the title. Not just yet. LA Knight survives. Some great strength shown by the number one contender. Of course, tonight here, Clash of the Castle, we are kicking off a two-week international tour here in Cardiff, Wales. Tomorrow night, London, England for Monday Night Raw. Got to believe Tyler Bate would love to walk in to truly a home field advantage. Back on Monday Night Raw in London, England as the Intercontinental Champion. Will he be able to do so? Or will LA Knight be taking that spotlight away from the number one contender? Tyler Bate on the outside here. Now both men... Oh man, both men on the ring skirt. And Knight just ragdolling Tyler Bate to the outside. Hard fall there for the number one contender. And Knight not giving Tyler Bate a chance to breathe, stacking him up on the floor of Principality Stadium. Knight realizes he's gotta not just dig a little deep, but gotta throw off some offense that might take Tyler Bate off his game. But Bate picking the ankle and the reverse Boston that has won him some huge matches in the past on Monday Night Raw. But will it win in the Intercontinental Championship tonight in Cardiff? LA Knight's close to the ropes, but the pain may be too much to reach out. Oh, but Knight did his homework, picks the ankle of Tyler Bate and drops him with the neck breaker that time. And LA Knight, proud of his own work. Hard shot to the number one contender. Burning hammer and into the cover to retain the Intercontinental title. Not just yet, Tyler Bates still into this. Hungry as all hell is the number one contender. Fought with grit and glory to get this spotlighted match tonight at Clash of the Castle, not looking to see the opportunity slip through his fingers. Tyler Bates still very young in his career. He's been in WWE for quite some time. First ever NXT United Kingdom champion. Done a lot of great things down in NXT. This is only his first, not even full year yet, on the main roster. And he's looking to cap off, closing to the end of 2023 as the Intercontinental Champion. Can he do it? LA Knight, however, who has had a huge year already, as we mentioned, rising the ranks of the red brand. Not looking to take a step down from the pedestal. The champion could be looking for a count out victory. As Bate is trying to shake off the cobwebs at ringside. There's LA Knight. Gets caught with the reversal. Wait a minute, Tyler Bate! Down goes LA Knight! The same maneuver that he used to defeat Seth Rollins on two occasions. But unfortunately, LA Knight gets the shoulder off the canvas. Tyler Bate with that double-armed power bomb that he has used to defeat Seth Rollins, that he used to win the number one contendership. Unfortunately, LA Knight has got a little bit more left in the fuel tank. Oh, but Tyler Bate realizing that he's gonna have to go to the kitchen sink and pull anything out. Over the top, what a maneuver there! Tyler Bate getting innovative and follows it up with a shooting star at ringside. Cardiff Wales is coming unglued. Tyler Bate might not have put LA Knight away with that power bomb, but he has kept his foot firmly on the gas pedal over the top rope with an amazing corkscrew-like variation and then a shooting star at ringside, and the champion is down. 
Tyler Bay, oh, I think he might have been trying to pick the ankles that time. LA Knight, now BFT! Oh, that may do it. There goes the winning streak of Tyler Bay. No, Bay is still in it. Shoulder off the canvas. The match lives on. You have got to be kidding me. Tyler Bate showcasing the intestinal fortitude and the will to win tonight. A BFT by LA Knight, the maneuver that won him the Intercontinental Championship. Not the maneuver, at least yet, that is going to retain it. Tyler Bate got the shoulder up, but is the challenger too hurt to continue? Oh, Bate with the right hand. LA Knight with the counter. Oh, wait a minute. Second blood force trauma to Tyler Bate. Lateral press, and that'll do it. LA Knight spoils the hopes and dreams of Tyler Bate. Well, a great effort by the big strong boy. Tyler Bate gave it his all, but in the end, LA Knight just wanted it a little bit more. His Intercontinental Championship was on the line, and LA Knight was not looking to step down from the pedestal just yet. Here is your winner. Tyler Bate gave it his all, but in the end of the, the defiant champion, L.A. Knight is leaving Clash at the Castle with that prestigious Intercontinental goal. Well, ladies and gentlemen, coming up next here in Principality Stadium from Friday Night SmackDown, a personal score is set to be settled. Can Austin Theory close this chapter on his career and finally prove that he can defeat the Rated R Superstar Edge? In the annals of WWE history, some rivalries are born out of destiny, others out of pure competition. But the tale of Austin Theory and Edge is a story as old as time. It's a story of triumph and tragedy, of highs and lows, and it all comes to a head at Clash at the Castle. It all started at Extreme Rules in August 2022, when Austin Theory did the unthinkable in the midst of a fatal five-way match, he seized the opportunity, catching Edge off guard and securing his first WWE Championship at just 25 years old. It was a shocking moment that sent shockwaves through the WWE Universe, but Theory's moment of glory was short-lived. A little over a month later, Edge would enact his revenge, snatching the title back in a one-on-one -on -one showdown, leaving Austin Theory's championship reign as one of the shortest in recent memory. It was a loss that sent Austin Theory back, derailing his momentum and sending him back to the drawing board. But Theory, ever resilient, climbed his way back up from the bottom. Over the past year, Austin Theory has achieved great success. He has conquered the best of the best and ascended the ranks of WWE. But there's one constant that always brings him back to reality, the rated R superstar, Edge. On August 11, 2023, Theory and Edge renewed their rivalry on SmackDown, and yet again, it ended in disappointment for the young star. Theory blames Edge for shattering his red-hot momentum on the road to his world title opportunity at SummerSlam. And now, Theory is consumed by one goal, eliminating Edge. Edge sees one more bout with Austin Theory as a victory that could catapult him into another world title matchup. The ultimate opportunist wants to prove that he still has what it takes. Austin Theory is out to prove that he can defeat Edge in one-on-one -on -one combat, finally erasing the blemish on his record and prove himself as a true elitist in WWE. At Clash at the Castle, it's not just about winning or losing. It's about settling a score, proving a point, and finding out who truly stands in front of the other. Can Austin Theory succeed, or will Edge go three for three in this epic trilogy of clashes between two polar opposite superstars? Austin Theory is looking to close this chapter of his career, proving that he can defeat the rated R superstar Edge. But that is the question that is at hand. And for Austin Theory to move forward, he must defeat the rated R superstar tonight in Cardiff. The following is scheduled for one fall 
making his way to the ring from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing in at 220 pounds, Austin Theory. Let's take nothing away from what Austin Theory has done in his very successful yet young career in the WWE. As you just saw in the video package, former WWE Champion, the winner of the 2023 King of the Ring Tournament, and he owns victories over the likes of Cody Rhodes, Randy Orton, John Cena, but one name that Austin Theory has been unable to defeat in any which way is the Rated R Superstar Edge. And just 48 hours ago on SmackDown, major tag team main event, Austin Theory, Grayson Waller versus AJ Styles and Edge. Edge once again sticking it to Austin Theory, a spear and a pinfall inside of the squared circle. Austin Theory's gotta be fired up to finally defeat Edge. But on the flip side, the Rated R Superstar has got a point to prove for himself tonight. When it comes to the wins and losses, Edge has been a little bit unsuccessful on live premiere events in 2023. He's looking to change that perspective tonight, and he's looking to prove that he still has a lot more left in the tank. And his opponent from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, weighing in at 249 pounds. There is something that just gives me some goosebumps here in Metalingus Blast over these speakers in Principality Stadium. The Rated R Superstar, the Hall of Famer, one of the most decorated careers in WWE history. He's done it all, been there, done that. But there is a fire that burns inside the Rated R Superstar to keep accomplishing more. And that starts here tonight, one-on-one -on -one with Austin Theory their third singles match over the last 12 plus months here in the WWE, Theory, Edge, one-on-one. -on -one. Of course, it goes without saying, it's one of the reasons why we are here, but Edge defeated Austin Theory, Judgment Day 2022. Back in July, Edge defeated, excuse me, back in August, Edge defeating Austin Theory on Friday Night SmackDown. But now here we are, Clash at the Castle, October 2023, the long-awaited trilogy fight between Edge and Theory. And since the opening bell, Edge has been throwing some live rounds and Theory's got no answer so far. It's not like Theory has not pinned AJ, or excuse me, not pinned Edge, but it has come in the midst of multi-man matches in the past and he just does not feel he can move forward with his career until he solidifies that he is better than this Hall of Famer. Edge with that modified spear off the middle buckle that we have seen him use to perfection in the past. Austin Theory is feeling it. And the Rated R Superstar so far tonight at Clash at the Castle. Edge is coming in fired up. As we mentioned, Edge's win-loss record on live premiere events, a little bit rocky in 2023. Wait a minute, hold that thought. Austin Theory on the outside, and I had a feeling Edge was gonna take things to the air. Win-loss record aside, Edge is pushing the pace each and every time he steps foot inside the squared circle. As if he's the age of Austin Theory, still young and hungry. Edge is certainly hungry, he's certainly fired up, and certainly wants to put his name back in the hat for a future world championship opportunity. Austin Theory, ooh. Hard shot over the back. A theory trying to get back into this. Going back on our statement from a few moments ago, we look at every live premiere event that Edge has competed on this year, and there is not one victory for Edge. It's also in theory locking in that leg lock on Edge. A little bit of a call back to their Judgment Day 2022 encounter, where Theory was really working on a lot of the previous injuries of Edge throughout that matchup. And for Edge, Royal Rumble this year, it was a loss to Kevin Owens. WrestleMania, tag team loss. King of the Ring, Money in the Bank, both losses against Drew McIntyre. SummerSlam, came up short against Randy Orton. And then last month at No Mercy, Edge made it to the final two in that fatal five-way matchup, but ultimately pinned yet again by Drew McIntyre. Edge is looking for his first live premiere event. Victory here tonight at Clash of the Castle. Off the middle buckle again. Will that do it? Not just yet. 
You know, another added, added caveat to this whole thing. We talked about how Edge pinned Austin Theory 48 hours ago on SmackDown. Last month at No Mercy, it was elimination style. Edge eliminated Austin Theory from that World Championship match. Only adding to the tension between these two men. Two errors have been colliding between Theory and Edge, and Theory is finally looking to close the window on Edge's WWE career. And I do not think Cardiff Wales is a fan of the man from A-Town Down. And Edge is feeling the brunt of it right now. It's Austin Theory with another mean shot. Nothing pretty about Austin Theory's offense, though, so, so, so far in this matchup. My goodness. Getting tongue-tied over here. Now Edge, legs locked, Theory dropping him on the knee. And Austin Theory has come in with a game plan tonight. Edge is feeling the brunt of it right now. Just beaten down on the Hall of Famer. As we were saying, nothing pretty about Theory's offense thus far. Just effective, slow and methodical to a point. Gets the two count there. Not the three that he was open for. It's going to take a lot more, in my opinion, to keep down Edge. Never count out Edge. That's one thing for sure. Nice reversal there. Edge not able to take advantage since it's set into the ropes. Austin Theory not able to catch him here. Would have been a kick to the gut. Edge, there's a counter. Another shot. And here comes Edge starting to come unglued. We're gonna talk about a fire lit inside Edge. Well, there you see it firsthand as Austin Theory rolls to the outside. Edge is up top, and a crossbody from the heavens by the Rated R Superstar. Down and out is Austin Theory, at least momentarily. Edge gonna look to bring things back inside the squared circle and find the finish he is hoping for, hoping for tonight at Clash at the Castle. And once again drops Theory. These two men are coming in tonight looking to beat the hell out of each other. A lot of fists being thrown, a lot of kicks, a lot of knees. This is simply a battle of who is the better man. Oh, wait a minute, Edge, speaking of such, an execution. But Austin Theory kicks out. Edge one step closer to victory, one step closer to beating Austin Theory once and for all tonight. But Theory able to survive the execution at least for a moment. What Theory needs to avoid is that spear by Edge. The spear that he has fell to on so many occasions. Last year, that ended his short-lived WWE title reign. This past year, just over the last couple of months, multiple victories for Edge over Austin Theory. Theory's got to avoid that spear from Edge. Theory's got to avoid anything right now as he is at least trying to. Nice suplex, a little bit of a twerk on it. See the sense of urgency out of Theory after he got dropped at that execution. Austin Theory's doing his best to flip the switch right now. Take Edge off his feet, hopefully keep him there. Austin Theory can't get cocky though. This is not a matchup that has been the benefit of him throughout his career. It's the whole reason why we're here. Theory better stay focused at the task at hand. Into the cover, and Edge survives again. A lot of bad blood between these two men. It's not just about those wins and losses. We've seen Theory ambush Edge in the backstage area on multiple occasions as well. There's a personal vendetta here as Edge, big time Canadian destroyer. Cover by Edge. Not just yet, Theory gets the shoulder up. We might be in Cardiff, but Edge bring a little bit of that Canadian style here to Principality Stadium. My goodness, Austin Theory dropped right on the crown of his head. And Edge now stacking him up in the middle rope. All the weight of the Rated R Superstar, who is no small man, just squashing Theory's windpipe right up against the middle rope. And again, Austin Theory trying to get out of it. A lot of back and forth in this match between Theory and Edge. Wins and losses aside, just being in the ring with each other on several occasions, you start to learn the other's arsenal. You know your opponent well. And that is what we are seeing right here tonight. A lot of counters, a lot of back and forth. As now Edge rolls to the outside here. Here comes Theory, Tope Suicida, and down goes Edge momentarily. 
This could be a huge win, possibly the biggest win of Austin Theory's 2023. Which world championship or not, which has been something Austin Theory has had his eyes on throughout this year, is still going to be one hell of a year to look back on in the career of Austin Theory. If, if he can defeat Edge. Looking back against the win against Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania. Austin Theory, the 2023 King of the Ring winner. But Edge is not looking to give Austin Theory that much-wanted victory tonight. Edge needs a live premiere event victory. We round down all his L's from 2023 on these big stages. And the Hall of Famer is looking to get his hand raised here tonight. Dropping Theory in the corner. Double boots, boots right to the, to the ribs of Austin Theory. Trying to knock the wind out of him there. And again, back and forth, the pendulum of momentum swings in this match as Edge knocks Theory over the top. Theory down on the outside. I don't know, have no idea what Edge has got in mind. Big time splash, and that is Edge. You can call it sense of urgency, or you can call it throwing caution in the wind. Maybe you could call it Edge trying to throw Theory off his game plan there. Little bit of uncharacteristic maneuver by the rated R superstar. Just throwing his own body into harm's way to punish Austin Theory. Oh, but Edge got caught that time, and Theory's the one sending Edge to the outside. Edge trying to get in, and a game of cat and mouse does not end well for Theory. Went for the crossbody to no avail. And again, that was Edge off the apron. Who is going to get the upper hand and keep it in this matchup? This is what happens when you've been in the ring with a familiar opponent. You know their game plan like the back of your hand, and Edge and Theory are reading each other like books tonight. Edge on the top rope, Theory on spaghetti legs, and there's the crossbody. And now Edge is to the cover. Looking to write the final chapter of this story tonight. That clash of the castle, not just yet. Theory, desperation kick out there. You see, put a lot of enthusiasm behind it. Looking to remind Edge that this thing is not done yet. Oh, man. Edge is throwing live rounds, and Theory is eating them right on the chin. Theory sends an edge into the corner now. Now into the opposing one. Theory stacks him up. Wait a minute, I think we know what's coming. Blockbuster! And that may be all she wrote. Theory with the victory. No, Edge is still in it. Credit where credit's due. Great maneuver by Theory, but Edge is still alive. But Theory's got his eyes locked. Kick to the rib cage. Theory's looking for the maneuver. That pinned Edge to win the WWE title in 2022. But Edge is alive. Edge is still alive. Theory has never beat Edge in one-on-one -on -one action, but that is the maneuver that pinned him in the five-man matchup at Extreme Rules of last year. Edge is still in it. He's rolled to the outside. A little bit on roller skates, trying to get his wits about him here. Saw Theory climb the ropes, elected against it, not looking to make a mistake. Cannot afford to against the Hall of Famer. And now it's Theory rolling to the outside. Couple of storylines to follow in this match. The momentum swinging back and forth. The game of cat and mouse trying to catch each other off guard. As Edge does that time. And Edge is fired up. Oh, wait a minute. Theory's on his feet. I think Edge thought he did more damage than he did. And it might have cost him. But the Rated R Superstar gets knocked down. Now Theory. We're going to stack up the offense here. One maneuver at a time. Oh, now a couple of closed fists. Austin Theory kicking things into a new gear. Ready to break this thing down into a pure six brawl if it means he gets the victory. Theory better not be playing to this crowd here in Principality Stadium. You give the ultimate opportunist the slightest window of opportunity. Edge has made a career of taking advantage of it. Back into the ropes is Edge, and Theory with an E. Again, Theory just gonna stack up the offense, one maneuver at a time, as he climbs the middle buckle and drops an elbow, damn near on the throat of Edge. 
And now a second time. Austin Theory has got Edge in a pocket of opportunity right now, and he better take advantage. Edge is not looking good. He is looking worse for wear as Austin Theory takes him for a ride. Oh my goodness. Edge is hurt. Edge is absolutely hurt. And Austin Theory. Oh, wait a minute. With Edge on his shoulders. A town down. A cover by Theory. And he did it. Austin Theory finally defeats Edge. Well, that was a hell of a matchup. Edge gave it his all. But at the end of the day, the back and forth ended up landing on Austin Theory's side of luck. And that little bit of a stretch near the end. Theory stacking up the offense and finalizing it with an eight town down gives him the three count he needed. Here is your winner, Austin Theory. Well, Edge may have won some battles, but ultimately, Austin Theory wins the war. And although he defeated Cody at WrestleMania, and although he won King of the Ring, this is the biggest win of Austin Theory's 2023, defeating the Rated R Superstar tonight here in Cardiff, Wales. Coming your way on Sunday night, November the 19th at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. It's a live premiere event. It's the 2023 edition of the Fall Classic, the Thanksgiving week tradition. It's WWE Survivor Series. Brought to you by Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown. And not only is this going to be a night of epic proportions, but it will emanate from the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden in New York City. Don't miss Survivor Series, live from MSG on November 19th. Well, that is huge news, ladies and gentlemen. Sunday night, November the 19th, we are heading back to Madison Square Garden, New York City, for the 2023 Survivor Series. And of course, Saturday night, November the 4th, Milwaukee, Saturday night's main event. A couple of huge live premieres coming your way in the coming weeks leading into November. But it is time for your second championship matchup here tonight. The WWE World Tag Team titles are on the line as Legato del Fantasma representing the classic LWO here tonight at Clash of the Castle. A little bit of a tribute and homage by Legato del Fantasma rocking the LWO on their chest, or shall I say, on their way into war with two men who love a good fight, Butch and Ridge Holland, the champions, the Brawling Brutes. Joaquin Wilde, Cruz del Toro alongside the Cruiserweight Champion of the World, the Emperor of Lucha Libre, Santos Escobar, collectively known as Legado del Fantasma. These two men in Del Toro and Wild looking for a career-defining victory tonight in Principality Stadium. But these two men making their way down the aisle in familiar soils. Ridge the Fridge, the Bruiserweight Butch. I can't believe I get to say this twice tonight. It's fight night! The Brawling Brutes won the World Tag Team titles last month in Chicago at Unforgiven, defeating Damian Priest and Finn Bauer of the Judgment Day. They've already retained the gold over Elton Prince and Kit Wilson in their Monday Night Raw debut, better known as Pretty Deadly. But tonight, those World Tag Team titles being defended not only internationally, but interpromotionally between Raw and SmackDown. The Brawling Group, Brawling Brutes, excuse me, representing the Red Brand. Legato del Fantasma representing Friday Nights. This should be one hell of a matchup between two teams who have become fan favorites on the respective shows, but who leaves Clash as the World Tag Team Champions? The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the World Tag Team Championship.
Introducing the challengers at a combined weight of 365 pounds, Cruz Del Toro and Joaquin Wilde, Legado Del Fantasma. And their opponents at a combined weight of 458 pounds, they are the World Tag Team Champions, Ridge Holland and Butch, the Brawling Brutes. It was last month in the season premiere of SmackDown that Cruz Del Toro and Joaquin Wild defeated Giovanni Vinci and Ludwig Kaiser of Imperium to claim their number one contendership. Over the last several weeks, we have seen Cruz Del Toro go one-on-one -on -one with Ridge Holland. That was a victory for the Brawling Brutes when Holland picked up the W. Two weeks ago on SmackDown, we saw Joaquin Wild defeat Butch on Friday nights. And wait a minute, hold that thought. My goodness! Well, Cruz Del Toro, bit of a cruiserweight, loves to fly around the ring, but not in that aspect. Ridge Holland just sent him for a roller coaster ride to the opposite side of the ring. My goodness, what a hot way to kick things off. The tag team titles are on the line. The bell sounded moments ago, and Ridge Holland are like a freight train coming at Cruz Del Toro. I don't think Del Toro could have been expecting that, at least not off the opening bell. That might have been an early fury by Ridge Holland, but a little bit naive to think he was going to get the victory right there. Nonetheless, we are here. We are alive. About an hour deep into Clash of the Castle. We want to thank you for joining us thus far tonight in Principality Stadium. Still a lot more of action to come here tonight in Cardiff, Wales. Butch getting tagged in against Cruz Del Toro. As we were mentioning moments ago, they have split the difference in singles matches the last number of weeks on SmackDown. Joaquin Wilde is able to pin Butch two weeks ago. Rich Holland defeating Cruz Del Toro. Momentum a little bit split between the champions and the challengers tonight. But ultimately who? Wait a minute. Del Toro taking care of Rich Holland. Oh, but he might have costed himself. Butch with the roll up here. All is fair in love and war. Well, Del Toro not afraid to split Rolling Brutes in half in an attempt to win the tag team titles tonight. Butch and Ridge Holland, they have fought all around the globe, but especially here in Europe. Familiar soils, just as Tyler Bate was earlier tonight, just as their leader Sheamus will be in tonight's main event. Last man standing match against Seth freaking Rollins when Sheamus looks to earn his fourth WWE Championship. But can Butch and Ridge Holland retain their world tag team titles? That is the question at hand at this current moment in this interpromotional matchup. Tag team division really been heating up in recent months on Raw and SmackDown. We have seen some teams really come into prominence, really become fan favorites among both their respective shows. Like, I don't know, Phantasma really rise in the ranks on SmackDown. Alpha Academy, Chad Gable and Otis really become fan favorites on Friday night as well. And the Brawling Brutes have only been a team the last six months or so on Monday Night Raw, maybe a little bit more, winning the World Tag Team titles. I mean, it's a competitive division as Joaquin Wilde immediately off entering the ring, taking down Ridge the Fridge, sends him for a ride that time. Joaquin Wilde, a little bit of that singles momentum against Butch two weeks ago. We're gonna ride it into this matchup tonight. One thing about Legato del Fantasma that we can say about the Brawling Brutes, so we can't take it away from the opposing team the LDF went the distance with Imperium on the season premiere of SmackDown. Near a 20-minute battle with Giovanni Vinci and Ludwig Kaiser. Inside the middle of that ring, and they just wanted it more. They wanted the number one contendership. They wanted this opportunity. My goodness, as Ridge Holland says, just as much you want it, I want it that much more. We've seen Holland and Butch go the distance in vicious wars against the Judgment Day. Winning those tag team titles back in Chicago, as we mentioned. Not looking to lose them in only their second defense. Early kick out there by Cruz Del Toro. Gonna take a little more to keep down these hungry challengers. And a tag made to Butch. Both these teams trying to keep fresh legs in this world tag team title matchup. Del Toro springboard. Oh man, nice Insiguri kick. Knocks Butch off his feet, at least for a moment. Can he keep it going here? You're an Aggie Valley Del Toro. Loves to take things to the air, but definitely, I would say, the most powerful of the unit in Legato del Fantasma. 
Imagine how strong that trio could be on SmackDown. And Santos Escobar already the Cruiserweight Champion. And then Del Toro and Wild leave tonight as the World Tag Team Champions. I mean, LDF going to be running Friday nights. What about Santos Escobar? You want to talk about him for a moment? Cruiserweight Champion, we know in the near future he's going to be defending that gold against the Cruiserweight Classic winner, Ilya Dragunov who's just officially moved to SmackDown and made his blue brand debut 48 hours ago, defeating Drew Gulak. Watch for Del Toro, step up, corkscrew to the outside. One of those innovative maneuvers that put Del Toro on the map here in WWE several years ago. And that is what brought Legado Del Fantasma so much success in NXT, and they're looking to ride in to Friday Night SmackDown and here tonight at Clash of the Castle. Del Toro just should have wear down Butch at ringside. Can't get the victory out here, but can certainly do a number on the bruiserweight. Oh, man. And a pump kick by Butch. Who dare I say, maybe the toughest man in this match. And we're looking at a man in Butch who over the last 12 months in WWE has two reigns with the Intercontinental title under his belt. And of course, one half of the World Tag Team Champions right now. Del Toro trapped between a rock and a hard place and gets spun out by the Bruiserweight into the cover to retain the titles, not just yet. Joaquin Wilde getting in there as well. Ridge Holland looking to take care of the other half of Legato Del Fantasma. Oh, wait a minute, Butch. Butch, bitter end. Will that do it? Into the cover. Oh no, Cruz Del Toro with the kick out. And Cardiff Wales is coming alive for the efforts of these two, two, these two duos, excuse me. Maybe a little early for Butch to be, oh man, put away in this matchup. Nice kick by Del Toro. Rich, Rich Holland breaking things up there. As we were saying, maybe a little early for a finish between two teams who are willing to go to championship rounds. 450 splash by Cruz Del Toro. Into the cover there, but it's not enough to get the victory. When there is bodies still moving, you cannot expect to get a three count, especially in these kind of tag team matches. Del Toro taking care of Holland. Butch trying to get his wits about him on the outside. And I think that was a smart move there. Del Toro has been in the last number of minutes. Tag made to Joaquin Wild. Fresh legs, fresh heartbeat. Tag team title match rolls forward. Joaquin Wild and Cruz Del Toro. This is their breakout moment they have been waiting for, man. Not afraid to sometimes sit in the shadow of Santos Escobar. But tonight, this is their opportunity to break out on their own become the World Tag Team Champions, become some of the faces of WWE alongside the Emperor. Wait a minute, Butch, small package, not just yet. A lot of near falls by Butch and Ridge Holland, going for the cover a lot so far in this match. Could that be part of the strategy? Do they realize that Joaquin Wilde and Cruz Del Toro withstood everything that Giovanni Vinci and Ludwig Kaiser had to throw at them back on the season premiere of SmackDown? And Ridge Holland with the overhead throw. Holland and Butch looking to get things done. But Cruz Del Toro is still alive. And I, I, I got to be honest, whether it's Joaquin Wilde or Del Toro, Brawling Brutes are going to have to find a way to divide and conquer this match because so far, the numbers of both of these duos is what is progressing this match for. As Joaquin Wilde takes Holland off his feet. And a very interesting submission hold, a little close to the ropes, but won't discount the effort of one Joaquin Wild. There's Butch in there trying to break things up. Rich Holland may not need him. Cruz Del Toro taking out Butch. Listen, I'd be willing to bet there's some mutual respect between the efforts of these two teams, but at the end of the day, tag team titles are on the line. Any means necessary to get the victory. As Joaquin Wild almost stole it there by that misstep by Rich Holland. Holland rolling to the outside. Just trying to get the eggs unscrambled, if you will. And Joaquin Wilde turning his sights to Butch. And that may come back to haunt him. Look at this strength by Ridge the Fridge. Down goes Wilde. We said Butch may be the toughest in this matchup. Ridge Holland, without a shadow of a doubt, is the strongest. 
We'll call Ridge the Fridge for nothing. Like a freight train coming at you. Big time shoulder block there. Sending Joaquin Wild in the next week. Into the air, tries to take him for another power slam, some kind of variation. Counter by Wild. Wait a minute. Double boots to the jaw. Same maneuver that defeated Butch on SmackDown. But it's not enough to get the three count because Butch is still moving. Divide and conquer at some point in this match will be the story, I guarantee you. Because as long as these two teams are still alive, they are going to keep pushing forward to leave Cardiff Wales as the World Tag Team Champions. Tag made to Del Toro. Does he have what it takes? Does he have the answer to keep down Holland? Not just yet. Don't try to outstrength the strong man of the contest. And again, Del Toro goes for a ride. And no rough, la or no easy landing, I should say, either. That's a rough one. Stuck between a rock and a hard place and gets knocked down by that huge lariat. And a tag back made to the bruiserweight. Now Butch charges at him. Little leapfrog there. Man, what a great matchup we got for the tag team titles on hands. You can always count on the tag team titles to be one of the premier matches on each and every one of these live premier events. Always ready to steal the show is the tag team division. We've seen some of the matches of the year take place for the tag team titles. Like I don't know, Fantasma and the Brawling Brutes are going to do the same tonight. Del Toro. Blood still pumping through the veins. Nice takedown, simple yet effective. Into the cover. Trying to catch Butch off guard, but Holland breaking things up. They were in brawling Bruce territory that time. Holland taking care of Wild. Del Toro taking care of Rich Holland. Wait a minute, Butch back inside the ring. Here's Del Toro, wait a minute, he's swinging here. Butch tried to sneak up on him, but Del Toro had his wits about him. Rich Holland, maybe down or dazed on the outside. Look, I don't know, Fantasma's got a window of opportunity here. Goes for the step up kick, but nobody home. Butch with the double boots to the rib cage. Another kick, the bruiserweight. Starting to showcase why he has earned that nickname throughout the years. Many a battles here in Cardiff, Wales, and a nice power bomb sits out with it. And Cruz Del Toro trying to crawl towards the corner. Oh, wait a minute, Butch. We said divide and conquer, my goodness. Joaquin Wild getting dropped on his crown. And now Butch with a bitter end for a second time on Cruz Del Toro. No! You have gotta be kidding me. Legato Del Fantasma surprising the world. Del Toro Wild. And Santos Escobar even may just want it more tonight in Principality Stadium. That was the second bitter end in this matchup. Del Toro's still alive, and so is Joaquin Wild, who just spoiled the plans of Butch on the top. Now Del Toro's going up. He hits another 450, this may be over. And that's exactly what he's going for. Cover here. Ridge Holland still alive, however. And this is what the tag team titles are all about. Scratching and clawing till the very end. It's a race to the finish line. Who is going to outrun the other and leave with the championship gold? There's no way these guys are 100% at this point in the matchup. They have thrown a lot in each other's way. Roadblock after roadblock in this match. But who's going to be the overcoming? Joaquin Wild shot right to the spine of Butch. Another one there. A tag back made to Cruz Del Toro. I'm not sure how smart that is. He took a lot of offense from Butch a few moments ago, but won't knock the game plan of a guy El Fantasma. They got the number one contendership for a reason. They outlasted Imperium a number of weeks ago. But can they take down Butch and Holland tonight? Oh, there's that step up kick back. By Cruz Del Toro. Cover again, but Ridge Holland is still alive. And Legato Del Fantasma needs to realize that they are in there with one of the toughest teams in the entire WWE. Across Raw, SmackDown, even NXT. 
And Butch with a couple of right hands. Rolling up Del Toro. And he almost had him. Legato Del Fantasma is going to have to take one person out of that team and keep him out for good because Butch and Ridge Holland will fight with black eyes, broken fingers. They will fight till there's literally absolutely nothing left to give. That is why they're the tag team champions. That is why they associate with the Celtic Warrior Sheamus. That is why we say fight night. That's why they're called the Brawling Brutes. Butch is down at least for the moment. Maybe Del Toro and Wild heard that little rally call. Ridge Holland takes care of Joaquin Wild. The Wild might have hit the ropes on the way down. That's what the tag team titles are all about. These two teams leaving everything inside the squared circle. How much do they got left? Now Joaquin Wild, wait a minute from behind. Counter by Holland though. And down goes Del Toro. And Joaquin Wild from behind. This thing is starting to kick into the Austin Theory edge gear where the pendulum momentum swings back and forth. Joaquin Wild gets countered by Holland. Who is going to get that one lasting blow to finish off this match? Will that do it right there? Into the cover goes Ridge the Fridge, but Joaquin Wild is still alive. Win, lose, or somehow draw, do not discount the effort of Legato del Fantasma tonight. They are proving that they deserve to be in the spotlight for the tag team titles here at Principality Stadium. Now Holland picks the ankles. Another desperate cover there. And Butch took care of Del Toro, but Wild is somehow still alive. What the hell is it gonna take? And another overhead throw. Del Toro's down at ringside. Holland into the cover. And that'll do it. The Brawling Brutes win the race to the finish line. Well, that was certainly a test of endurance between the Brutes and Legato Del Fantasma. And credit where credit's due to the opposers, but the tag team titles remain on Monday Night Raw. Here we are. The Brawling Brutes with an impressive showing here tonight in Principality Stadium. They have defeated the Judgment Day. They have defeated Elton Prince and Kit Wilson of Pretty Deadly. And now Cruz Del Toro and Joaquin Wilde. Despite their efforts, Legato Del Fantasma's name gets added to the list. Brawling Brutes putting together an impressive resume as World Tag Team Champions. And the championship reign lives on through Cardiff, Wales here at Clash at the castle. Well, coming up next here at Clash at the castle, it is gonna be a battle of heroes as the 16 time world champion, John Cena looks to win his sixth United States title as he takes on the American nightmare, Cody Rhodes. As we know, Cena's contract with Raw recently expired, leaving him as a free agent in WWE. And Cena took advantage of that, surprising us all as he stared down Cody Rhodes face-to-face -face on the season premiere of SmackDown. Cena made his intentions crystal clear that he was coming for the United States gold. Cody has had a successful reign thus far. He took down Gunther at SummerSlam. He has retained the gold over Ricochet, Ron Breaker, and Grayson Waller. But can the American Nightmare overcome the franchise player of WWE? We find out right now. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the WWE United States Championship. From Friday Night SmackDown, the United States Championship is set to be defended between these two heroes in a clash of epic proportions. The 16-time World Heavyweight Champion, the franchise, the greatest of all time in my personal opinion, Big Man.
match, John, John Cena. What a presence that comes over Principality Stadium as John Cena makes his way down the aisle. It has been an awesome night so far here in Cardiff, Wales, and business continues to rise as John Cena is set to challenge Cody Rhodes for the red, white, blue, and gold, the prestigious United States Championship. A title that Cena has held many a times throughout his career. A championship he has held proudly. It was his first title here in the WWE. But will it be his latest against Cody Rhodes here tonight at Clash at the Castle? Cannot think of a bigger way for these two SmackDown stars to battle under these bright lights of Principality Stadium. And 23 has been a comeback year for the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes making his return to the WWE at WrestleMania fighting a multiple month war which concluded in a 30 minute Iron Man match overcoming Austin Theory a road that led him to SummerSlam back in August to defeat Gunther handing Gunther his first loss on the main roster and becoming the United States Champion since then, Cody has retained the gold multiple times over. Let's hold that thought. Sometimes you just gotta sit back and let the actions speak louder than the words. Cody Rhodes, as we mentioned, retaining his United States Championship on multiple occasions thus far against the one and only Ricochet, meaner than evil Braun Breaker, and the Aussie icon, Grayson Waller. And I mean no disrespect to those incredible talents, for this will no doubt be Cody's toughest battle. A future Hall of Famer, a solidified all-star in the annals of WWE history. And I just sent, said it a moment ago, but in my opinion, the greatest of all time between the ropes and even outside of the ropes in John Cena. This is a battle of beloved stars, fan favorites, and mutual respect between them. That is why it has been dubbed a battle of heroes tonight. And what more fitting championship for a battle amongst these heroes than the red, white, blue, and gold, the United States Heavyweight Championship of Friday Night SmackDown. Introducing the challenger from West Newbury, Massachusetts, Weighing in at 251 pounds, John Cena! And his opponent, from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing in at 220 pounds, he is the WWE United States Champion, the American! Remember, the only reason we are getting this matchup tonight is because John Cena's Monday Night Raw contract expired and Cena elect to remain a free agent, however, appearing on Friday Night SmackDown and challenging Cody Rhodes. And I think that is a testament to the talents of the American Nightmare that Cena wants to test himself against Cody Rhodes and in the process, possibly gain a championship that he has held many a times throughout his career and a title that he has numerous amounts of respect for. But here we go, Cena and Cody. At this stage is in their careers. Although it has happened before, it's almost as if it's a dream match all over again for the United States title. It should be very interesting to see how this matchup progresses. Both of these men, a lot of momentum coming in. Not really one way or the other. Cody Rhodes has not taken a loss since Back in June on SmackDown, John Cena been red hot ever since appearing on Friday nights. Confronting Cody after he retained his title over Grayson Waller at the season premiere. Just a week later, Cena taking down Braun Breaker in the main event. And remember what happened 48 hours ago on SmackDown. Cena and Cody teaming up to take on Braun Breaker and the Nigerian Giant Omos in a successful tag team 
action that kicked us off. Speaking of action, Cena coming off the middle buckle with a big time DDT on the American Nightmare and keeping the foot on the gas pedal. John Cena looking sharp in the opening moments of this United States Championship match. But never count out Cody Rhodes. That is what has been the story of the American Nightmare this year. Undesirable to undeniable. It's not just a catchy catchphrase to put in a t-shirt. It's exactly what describes Cody's road to where he is at right now on Friday Night SmackDown. Oh, and John Cena with a haymaker on Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes has taken down some of the best. On Friday Night SmackDown, some established stars, some stars of tomorrow. But can he keep down Cena? As Cena goes for a cover, trying to win the United States title. One thing we know about Cena is I think he knew he wasn't going to keep Cody Rhodes down that time. However, trying to get into the psyche of the American Nightmare. Off the code red, and that time might have been seeking a three count. Cody Rhodes survives. Cena respects that. Cena respects the talents of Cody between the ropes. Seen a little bit more big match experience, especially here in the WWE. We'll call him Big Match John for nothing. Cena has stood across the ring from some of the greatest of all time in these massive jam-packed stadiums over the years and has come out successful. Cody Rhodes, only a handful of these kind of experiences. Nice maneuver by Cody, going for the cover there, and a kick out by Cena. Cena's controlled the first few minutes of this contest as Cody Rhodes looks to mount some offense here. And speaking of the such, Cody Rhodes takes things to the outside. Crashing and burning, luckily to the vantage point of John Cena. Cena gets taken down, and now Cody with a cross face on the outside of the ring. You know, Cody can technically win the title via count out here. However, I don't believe that is what he's looking to do. I think he saw the window of opportunity and just was trying to wear down John Cena. Cena, however, needs to get the job done in between the ropes to win the United States Championship tonight. And although Cody does have that champion's advantage, I do believe Cody wants to do the same. Get a solidified victory over Cena. Proving that his spot as one of the faces of Friday Night SmackDown is well earned as if we didn't know it already. And a big time counter there by John. Nice power bomb. Not sure what Cody Rhodes was looking for there. However, Cena had it scouted. But there's Cody. Coming back. Couple of lariats. John Cena gets caught. And the American Nightmare starting to roll like an old locomotive. Picking up steam. And John is off his feet in the United States champion. Starting to mount some offense here. And now to the middle buckle. As these two heroes wage war over the United States title and a missile drop kick that nails on the button. Cody, disaster kick. The American nightmare starting to come alive. And John Cena is down and out, off the early going. And let's see if Cody Rhodes has what it takes to get the three count here as he has completely flipped the switch on the franchise. Cover, not just yet. John Cena, see a little bit of fatigue starting to set in. Not the most, I should say, a very enthusiastic kick out. In the sense of trying to remind Cody Rhodes that he still has enough left in the tank. But Cena obviously hurt off that flurry by Cody. Cody was trying to go underneath, but Cena had it scouted. And John in perfect position here for a little five. Knuckles shuffle on Cody Rhodes. Cena into the cover. Will that do it? Not just yet, Cody Rhodes holds on to his title just a little longer. Let's see it with the snap man. And Cena just like that, snap of the fingers. Saw a window of opportunity, landed right in position. Hit that little you can't see me in front of a sold out Principality Stadium, giving the people what they want. Unfortunately, Cody Rhodes has been there before and he has survived before. Again, what, that's what makes this matchup so very interesting tonight. Wait a minute, we'll hold that thought at least momentarily as Cody gets sent to the outside. We saw Cody fly out to the outskirts earlier. I'm not sure, Cena may be thinking something similar here, heading to the top rope, but too slow to decide. Cannot second guess against the United States champion. Cena, however, still takes the advantage with the double axe handle. Thinking on his feet. 
does the franchise that time and luckily keeps the momentum on his side. Cena and Cody have meant before for the United States Championship, if that. 2015, when Cody was under the moniker of Stardust. Oh, and speaking of such, a little homage. But wait a minute, Cena takes advantage of the back being turned. Oh, and Cody kicks out, close call. Cena fought Cody then. Cena fought Cody when Rhodes was just a young blood here on Monday Night Raw in the WWE. Back in 2009, 2010, many a battles. This stage is career. Cody Rose is an absolute solidified all-star. One of the best of the best. And that's one of the reasons why they crossroads on John Cena. Oh, Cena kicked out. Cena kicked out, and that is a rare occurrence. Not many people able to survive a crossroads by Cody Rhodes. And the American Nightmare realizes he's going to have to keep pushing forward. Do not let that kick out by Cena take his eye off the ball. Cody has made a lot of doubters become believers this year, but not looking to let John Cena win here tonight. Cody rolling outside, Cena heading to the top rope. And John Cena once again finds Cody slipping and drops him with the axe handle. And Cena using his own body as a weapon that time. Cody Rhodes may have thrown his best shot. Cena survived. If Cena hits an attitude adjustment, that may be all she wrote in this matchup. Sends Cody into the ropes. Wait a minute. Duck and a dive and outruns Cody that time. And Cody may be hurt. The fatigue of this matchup with John Cena may be starting to set in as Cena's wheels are spinning. Attitude adjustment to win the United States title. No, Cody Rhodes survives. Close call there as the American Nightmare just gets the shoulder off the canvas within the last seconds. John Cena throws his best shot. The attitude adjustment. And now that they have shown their cars, it may just be a test of endurance between Cena and Cody Rhodes. It would have knocked Cena down. Cody going for the quick cover. Not just yet. Oh, wait a minute. Little bionic elbow. A shout out to the American Dream, baby. These two men who are proud to support the red, white, and blue fighting in the middle of Cardiff, Wales for the United States Championship. But who is going to head back to the States in the next couple of weeks as the United States Champion? Of course, this Friday night will be London, England on Friday Night SmackDown. Two weeks, or just under two weeks from now, we'll be in Scotland for Friday Night SmackDown. But the United States Championship is on the line tonight. And Cody Rhodes throwing caution in the win in the means of victory. To the outside, things go. Cody and Cena not afraid to break things down into a war. And John Cena is down. You see these men starting to feel tired, starting to feel fatigued. But who's got enough left in the tank to outlast the other and retain the United States Championship? Oh man, Cody starting to throw some live rounds. And a drop kick on the outside. Cena survived the crossroads. Cody survived an attitude adjustment. And Cody may just be trying to pass out the franchise at ringside now. You got to get creative when you're in a matchup like this, especially against a superstar like John Cena. Oh, referees at a count of eight. Both men hustling back in between the ropes. They want the finish decisively tonight. And there's a classic bulldog out of the arsenal of Cena. And again, John takes down Cody. And John Cena for a third time scaling the ropes. Maybe three too many. And John Cena gets what he was looking for. And the champion is down. But can Cena put together the right pieces to figure out the puzzle that is the American Nightmare? Went for that vintage shoulder block to no avail. Oh, and Cody Rhodes. That'll get in the psyche of Cena. And he almost got the victory off it. It's a slap to the face. 
Cody not afraid to get his hands dirty. If it means retaining that United States Championship in this battle of heroes tonight. Cody winding things up, dropping the knee. This is just a classic wrestling matchup between two men who favor the old school. And at one point, John Cena, we almost referred to him as a new school player. Cody Rhodes, the same thing, but there's just something classic about these two superstars. Not a lot of bells and whistles. Just the tools that get it done. Cena gets put on the top rope. And Cody gonna meet him up there. He'll be going for a Frankensteiner that takes down the franchise player. John Cena down, but is Cena out? And Cody, if Cena's not out yet, he may be after the Verna Breaker. Cover by Cody. And Cena still has got life left in him. Close call there, but Cody's not done. Eyes locked on the franchise. Goes behind and looking for a second crossroads. Lands and flush. Dead center of the ring. No ends, ifs or buts about it. Cody Rhodes has successfully retained his United States Championship. Great contest between John Cena and Cody Rhodes tonight. Cena throwing his best shot as you just saw, but in the end, the American Nightmare gets the final blow that retains the red, white, blue, and gold. Here is your winner, and still, WWE United States Champion, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. You know, we talked about moments ago the resume that the Brawling Brutes are putting together with the tag team titles. Well, what about the resume Cody Rhodes is putting together with that United States title? Ricochet, Gunther, Braun Breaker, Grayson Waller, and the greatest of all time, John Cena. Put some respect on the name of Cody Rhodes, because you are looking at one of the faces of Friday Night SmackDown, and of course, your United States Champion. Coming your way on Sunday night, November the 19th, at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. It's a live premiere event. It's the 2023 edition of the Fall Classic, the Thanksgiving week tradition. It's WWE Survivor Series. Brought to you by Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown. And not only is this going to be a night of epic proportions, but it will emanate from the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden in New York City. Don't miss Survivor Series, live from MSG on November 19th. Well, as many of you know, the WWE Women's Championship has been universal between both Raw and SmackDown for quite some time, but a major shakeup is on the horizon. First, the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship are temporarily being retired. However, in its place will be a brand new title exclusive to the Friday Night SmackDown brand, the Women's World Championship. Over the next several weeks, qualifying matches will take place where the winners will meet in a four-way elimination match at Survivor Series to crown SmackDown's brand new champion. This leaves the WWE Women's title the official property of Monday Night Raw. Major shakeups in the women's division that creates even more opportunity for both the women of Raw and SmackDown to step up. And speaking of such, Two of Monday Night Raw's premier athletes are set to square off up next for the WWE Women's Championship. The man, Becky Lynch, the nightmare, Rhea Ripley. This is a long-awaited meeting between these two women, and tensions have certainly picked up in recent weeks. Of course, it was back at No Mercy, where Rhea Ripley shocked the world when she cashed in her Money in the Bank briefcase to take home the title. It was just 24 hours later where Becky Lynch would finally find a way to defeat Asuka and stake her claim as the top contender. Becky Lynch has had her sights on the title all year long, and she's not looking to let another opportunity slip through her fingers. 
The most interesting caveat is that these two women met one-on-one -on -one back in July on Monday Night Raw, where Becky would get the victory. Just two weeks ago, however, we saw Rhea Ripley try to gain the upper hand, ambushing Becky with a title shot over the dome. Becky Lynch is sure to be fired up as she finally gets another chance at the WWE Women's Championship. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the WWE Women's Championship. Well, the stakes could not be higher as not only is the WWE Women's Championship on the line, but as you just heard after that breaking news moments ago, this is to solidify the face of the Monday Night Raw Women's Division. The Women's Tag Team titles taking a back seat, temporarily retired, to be replaced with the Women's World Championship for Friday Night SmackDown. We're gonna talk all about that in the weeks to come, leading up to Survivor Series on Friday nights, but tonight, the spotlight is on the red brand, Monday Night Raw, and these two Raw superstars, Becky Lynch and Rhea Ripley, set to go one-on-one -on -one for the top spot of the red brand as the WWE Women's Champion. Certainly the Annie upped, and just that little bit of news, but at the end of the day, the result remains the same for the man Becky Lynch, who has been on the hunt all year long for the WWE Women's title. Looking to finally stake her claim at the top of the mountain all over again. It's been a long and hard road back to number one contendership, but tonight Becky Lynch looks to take the fullest advantage as she gets Rhea Ripley one on one. And speaking of the devil, representing the Judgment Day, the Eradicator, the Nightmare, the WWE Women's Champion. Rhea Ripley brings an ominous presence over any arena she steps in especially on this big stage of Clash at the Castle. As one of the most dominant women in recent history walks her way down the aisle, you gotta wonder what is going through the mind of not just the challenger, but the champion, Rhea Ripley. Knowing that the last time she went one-on-one -on -one with Becky Lynch, it was a victory for the woman who opposes her tonight, that being the man herself. Rhea Ripley has tried to get the upper hand in recent weeks. She has gained some victories on Monday Night Raw. She has laid out Becky Lynch. Rhea obviously has some momentum on her side, but this is her first championship defense since winning that title last month at No Mercy. And of all people, Becky Lynch to be contesting her, you gotta wonder what the confidence level of the Eradicator is at tonight. Especially with a woman as hungry as Becky Lynch, who, as we just mentioned, went through a long and hard road to become number one contender all over again. But who wants it more? The WWE Women's title is on the line here in Principality Stadium. Let's send things down to the ring for your official introductions. Introducing the challenger from Dublin, Ireland, Becky And her opponent from Adelaide, Australia. She is the WWE Women's Champion, Rhea Ripley. Well, both of these women fighting out of international soils tonight, but their roads cross right here in Cardiff, Wales. Rhea Ripley handing over that championship for the first and possibly the very last time in her newly won reign. The man, Becky Lynch, taking a look at the gold that she has been hungry for since her return at the top of 2023. But it's put up or shut up time. The bell has sounded and we are underway. Rhea Ripley, big boot off the get-go, looking for the quick cover here. 
Oh man, I think that says a lot about Rhea Ripley's game plan tonight. But hold that thought as Becky Lynch now going eye for an eye, STF locked in on Rhea Ripley. And she tapped out Tiffany Stratton of the same maneuver several weeks ago on Monday Night Raw. Rhea Ripley has done her homework, and she better have, because I think that opening boot leading to the pinfall tells a lot about the game plan of Rhea Ripley. She knows what we have discussed, and that is Becky Lynch owns a victory over the Nightmare, and Rhea is not looking to go into deep waters with the man Becky Lynch tonight. Rhea Ripley better not let that loss back in August shake her confidence. She won Money in the Bank in July for a reason. She cashed in successfully for a reason. It's not just because of the opportunity, it's because of the dominance, and it's because of the effort of Rhea Ripley, whether you like it or not. Nonetheless, Becky Lynch looks to be using the submissions as a crutch at the moment to try to get back into this matchup. In just the early moments, Rhea Ripley has come out explosive, but so has the man. Should be very interesting to see as this matchup progresses if either woman is going to get the momentum and keep it for a sustained period of time. Rhea right now is just trying to inflict as much damage as humanly possible on the man Becky Lynch. You see Becky rolling to the outside and Rhea not on the chase yet. Not looking to give Becky a window of opportunity. And Rhea Ripley, maybe she's looking for a count out here. I know it's early on, Becky's gonna get back to her feet, but just sending Becky to the outside, forcing Becky to use that energy to get back up, to get back inside of the ring, expend that energy. I'm sure Rhea Ripley has done a lot of homework alongside her Judgment Day brethren and Finn Balor and Damian Priest in the lead up to this matchup with Becky Lynch tonight. So far, Becky showed a couple of signs of life, but Rhea Ripley obviously came in with a blueprint and is not looking to stray from it. Becky is not looking good right now as the Nightmare sends her for a ride, and this has been all Rhea Ripley so far. Again, this is for the top spot in the Raw Women's Division. Women's World Championship on the way for Friday Night SmackDown. These two Raw superstars fighting it out to be the face of the red brand. Both of those women want that accolade. And Becky again, trying to get back into this. Rhea Ripley says otherwise and sends Becky back into the corner. Rhea Ripley is not giving Becky Lynch any room to breathe. Again, I think it speaks volumes of what Rhea Ripley's mindset is, what her confidence level may be against Becky Lynch. Realizing that Becky can and could possibly will defeat Rhea Ripley if Rhea gives her the opportunity to. Sending Becky into the corner. And again, that's a recent loss for Rhea Ripley. It was during her position as Mrs. Money in the Bank on Raw. It's not like it was a loss over a year ago, some time ago. It was just two months ago on Monday Night Raw where we saw Rhea fall to Becky Lynch. And obviously, the Eradicator has not forgotten. As once again, Becky goes to the outside and Rhea, I thought she could have been looking for a count out there, elects to get back to her feet and head to the outskirts. Looking to meet Becky Lynch out there, who is on roller skates right now. Rhea Ripley charging at her, goes for the clothesline, didn't get all of it, and Becky Lynch finds a window of opportunity, and there you go. That's what Becky's gotta do. Oh, but I, you know what? That might be smarter by Becky. Head back inside the ring. Don't give Rhea what she wants, taking things to the outside. There's obviously a lot of exposed destruction hanging by the wayside. Becky taking her time to get back into this thing, and she sends Rhea for a hard fall. And Rhea Ripley may be rocked. Becky Lynch picking her spots. Oh, no. Oh, no. But she got caught that time. Rhea sent her for a ride up and over the top. A horrendous fall for Becky Lynch, and Rhea makes her pay for a double. Man, there was insurance on that receipt. Rhea Ripley sending Becky Lynch over the top rope, down to the floor. That's already an emphatic fall. And then Rhea diving off the apron, crushing the rib cage of the man. And that thrust kicked moments ago, and Becky Lynch may be out cold. Rhea searching for a count out victory here. She could not believe 
or she could believe that she can't beat the man Becky Lynch with a three count as she once again sends Becky to ringside and Rhea Ripley is going to try any means necessary to retain her title tonight. And Becky gets back inside obviously a little bit faster, only a two count, but you see Becky is starting to slow down physically. Oh, it has a nice clothesline. Don't speak too soon. The man got to where she was for not by mistake. Starting to reel there. Rhea Ripley gets caught in a nice neck breaker by the number one contender. Becky Lynch has been in the main event of WrestleMania. She's held championships all across WWE. She's won the Royal Rumble match. She's looking to do it again. Looking to win the big one. And Becky, oh man, mean slap, another shot. There goes Becky, numerous strikes. Again, stick and move. And now drops the signature leg, and she's going for a dose. One of the maneuvers that helped her gain victory last month at Unforgiven over the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka. Now Becky Lynch is really starting to pick up steam. Rhea Ripley is hurt, and the tides of change are coming in this match. Becky again. Drops the leg, and again, and Rhea Ripley, dead center of the ring. Becky's gonna catch her here. And almost, almost had her. Oh, look at Rhea Ripley, immediately realized she was in the pitfall, kicked out, sprung to her feet, but Becky Lynch has now got the STF locked back in on the nightmare. A tap out, bleeds victory for Becky Lynch. Is she moments away from becoming the new WWE Women's Champion? Oh, Rhea Ripley breaking the hold, breaking the grip of the man. And some simple yet effective elbows to the back. Oh, wait a minute. Electric chair position. Instead goes face first, and Becky might have caught the ropes on the way down. Well, that was certainly one way to get back into this, but Rhea not watching her ring awareness that time, letting her sense of urgency take over, and Becky Lynch had a clear-cut way to kick out, grabbing the ropes, and the matchup progresses. Becky Lynch showed some signs of life, but after the dominance of Rhea Ripley so far, how much does Becky have left? Counter for counter, and another big boot by the Nightmare. And Rhea Ripley brings a presence that I don't think any other woman has. It's different than Asuka, it's different than Shayna Baszler, some of the women who have dominated the division over the last year and change. Rhea Ripley is a different cat inside of the ring, and that's the reason she's on top right now. Becky Lynch has got to find a window, man. She's got to take advantage. But Rhea Ripley is starting to wrestle her style of match. And as she takes things to the top rope, the power gonna be on display. Or maybe not just yet. Hard fall for Rhea. Huge counter by Becky Lynch, who's now alone on the top. And elects for the somersault that takes the champion off her feet. Huge maneuver by Becky Lynch. Rhea looked to be going for a superplex. The man was able to get out of it. And now she's got the champion dazed. And Becky's not done just yet. Hook and Rhea Ripley and sending her for a ride. Becky's got a couple suplex variations in her arsenal. Obviously gonna take more out of Becky than he usually does to lift somebody the size and stature of Rhea Ripley, but nonetheless, Rhea gets taken to the outside. Becky's starting to find her groove. Now once again, the count begins. Becky Lynch cannot win the title via count out, however. It's one thing to use her surroundings to her advantage momentarily, but she's got to get the champion back inside the ring if she wants to leave Cardiff Wales as the WWE Women's Champion. Rhea sent back inside, and the man is starting to rally here in Principality Stadium. Could be a huge comeback victory, especially with how this match started with Rhea Ripley dominating, controlling the pace. If Becky Lynch can find a way to win, what a victory it could be. All counter by Rhea. Collar and elbow there. Becky gets sent into the corner. He goes right down to the canvas. No life left as Rhea Ripley is looking to kick whatever out of Becky Lynch that's still there. 
Now Rhea Ripley just beaten down on the number one contender. And just like that, snap of the fingers, the Nightmare finds herself back in control of her championship defense. And once again, Becky, barely set into the corner. And I say barely because the lights may be on, but nobody is home. And Becky Lynch gets ragdolled to the outside, proving our point that things may be nearing an end. And Becky Lynch may be out of it. Rhea's not done. Thought she could have been looking for the count out, but instead brings things to the outside. Oh, wait a minute here. Oh, man. Big time slam. That is a hard fall for Becky. She has taken a lot of those to the outside of this match. And again, Rhea's got Becky up. Goes to the well. Too many times. Becky with the counter. Oh, Rhea rushing back inside the ring. Not going to allow Becky Lynch to get what she wants that time. Becky on her tail. Rhea with a tackle down. Thought Becky Lynch had a chance to get back into this match. The Nightmare said otherwise. But the man's got a different plan. Wait a minute! Manhandle slam! Ball game! Game over! No! Rhea Ripley kicks out! How close was that? Becky saw a chance and she took it. A leap of faith with that manhandle slam, but not enough to keep Rhea down. And you notice what Becky Lynch just went to. She went to the arm of Rhea Ripley, possibly trying to soften it up for a disarmer. However, Rhea Ripley, a sense of urgency out of the women's champion, muscles up Becky Lynch and sends her down to the canvas with emphatic force. Business is picking up as we enter championship rounds in this women's division contest. Oh, now Becky Lynch, wait a minute, may have got caught herself because the Rhea Ripley just hit the Riptide. But the Eradicator does not have enough to keep down Becky Lynch. Becky is still in it. Cardiff Wales is coming unglued as Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch leave it all inside the ring tonight. The manhandle slam doesn't do it. The riptide doesn't do it. Things getting taken to the outside again and Rhea Ripley comes flying down on the man. We said it before, we'll say it again. The size and stature of Rhea gonna take more out of Becky Lynch than a normal fight. Becky is feeling the brunt of it right now. She might have survived the riptide, but she's certainly not thriving at the moment. He sent right into the steel ring post. And Becky Lynch might rue the day. She decided to step to the nightmare Rhea Ripley. As Becky gets sent back inside the ring, how much life is left by the looks of it. It looks as none. Rhea Ripley is looking to pick the bones like a predator seeking their prey. And Becky Lynch is a wounded animal. Oh no, wheels are spinning. The Nightmare looking for a second Riptide. Into the cover goes Rhea Ripley. Becky Lynch has been eradicated. Becky Lynch has got nothing to be ashamed of in defeat. It's been a rocky 2023, and I know how hard she fought for the number one contendership, but right now, Rhea Ripley is riding a wave of momentum that maybe nobody can stop. Here is your winner, and still WWE Women's Champion, Rhea. Statement victory as Rhea Ripley takes her place atop Monday Night Raw as the WWE Women's Champion. But now we jump to Friday Night SmackDown and the SmackDown main event because the World Heavyweight title is on the line next. Randy Orton's been searching for this one-on-one -on -one contest. He finally gets it tonight, but Drew McIntyre is ready to come home to Cardiff, Wales. For 239 days, Drew McIntyre has reigned supreme over Friday Night SmackDown as its unwavering champion. He's turned back the challenges of legends and rising stars, defeating the likes of John Cena, 
Braun Breaker, Austin Theory, AJ Styles, Edge, and even Randy Orton. But tonight's story isn't just about victory, it's about vengeance, settling old scores. Ever since Randy Orton's return to SmackDown, he's been fixated on a singular goal, a one-on-one -on -one match with McIntyre for the World Heavyweight Championship. At Money in the Bank, it was a triple threat. At No Mercy, a five-man elimination challenge. Does Orton take credit for those losses? Absolutely not. Randy Orton hangs his hat on a guarantee and unsettling belief that a singles match against McIntyre will spell the end of Drew's glorious reign at the top. Orton's mind games have been relentless. Ambushes week after week, attempting to incite McIntyre's anger and frustration, hoping that Drew's urge to see red will become his own downfall. But when you examine Drew McIntyre's 2023 resume, Randy Orton might want to reconsider his strategy. 2023 has been McIntyre's year, an undeniable banner bearer for the blue brand, turning away all challenges. But has the cold-hearted apex predator played the right chess moves to dethrone this warrior? It's a high-stakes battle where it's all or nothing. The fate of being the face of SmackDown hangs in the balance. Randy Orton, Drew McIntyre, the World Heavyweight Championship. The stage is set, and in this ring, they'll leave it all on the line, heart and soul, to X their names into history as the World Heavyweight Champion. This is the chance to live forever. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the World Heavyweight Championship! The World Heavyweight Championship of Friday Night SmackDown is on the line in the Blue Brand's respective main event. And here comes the Apex Predator, the Viper, Randy Orton, who has been on a very cold-hearted hunt for months on SmackDown for a one-on-one -on -one contest to challenge Drew McIntyre for the World Heavyweight Championship. It's been well documented. You just heard in the video package moments ago, Randy Orton, a part of a triple threat match at Money in the Bank. Randy Orton also a part of the five-man elimination challenge last month at No Mercy. Both losses for the Viper, but ultimately Randy Orton believes he deserves a one-on-one, -on -one, in air quotes, fair opportunity against Drew McIntyre, and tonight he gets his wish. I'll bite Randy Orton. You can argue whether this is an earned opportunity or not, but he certainly made a bed that he is gonna have to sleep in, ambushing Drew McIntyre multiple times over the last number of weeks, laying him out with the World Championship, an RKO through the announce table. What about last, or excuse me, 48 hours ago on SmackDown, the RKO on the equipment boxes back in the backstage area. Has Randy Orton bit off more than he can chew? Has he fired up the Scottish Warrior? Or does Randy Orton got the champion just right where he wants him? Nonetheless, about seven hours separate Drew McIntyre's hometown in Air Scotland to Cardiff, Wales. So McIntyre enters familiar grounds tonight in Principality Stadium. And what has been an incredible 2023. I'll bite you are looking at possibly the superstar of the year in Drew McIntyre and the World Heavyweight Champion, the Scottish Warrior, marches down the aisle, hoping for another successful championship defense. Seven titles, excuse me, seven successful championship defenses for McIntyre this year. And that doesn't include where he won the world title, defeating Seth Rollins back at WrestleMania in February. What about the win inside the Elimination Chamber earlier this year? McIntyre has been in absolute wars month after month on Friday Night SmackDown. We have seen McIntyre down and out, 
But just when you think he is done, and just when you think the world title is out of the grasp of McIntyre, he has come out on the other end, surprising us all and retaining his gold. But will that be the same result tonight? Or has Randy Orton, through being in the ring with McIntyre on several occasions this year, through doing his homework, through the ambushes, does Orton have what it takes and certainly have the right game plan in mind to keep down this warrior? Nonetheless, the stage is set. Cardiff, Wales, the World Heavyweight title is on the line on behalf of SmackDown. Let's send things down to the ring for your official match introductions. Introducing the challenger from St. Louis, Missouri, weighing in at 250 pounds, the Viper, Randy Orton. And his opponent from Ayr, Scotland, weighing in at 254 pounds, he is the world Heavyweight Champion, the Scottish Warrior, Drew McIntyre. Big fight feel for SmackDown's respective portion of tonight's Clash at the Castle double header main event. The World Heavyweight Championship is on the line. Randy Orton, the challenger. Drew McIntyre, the champion. A whole lot of writing on this contest. But it all comes to a head in the middle of Principality Stadium, Cardiff, Wales. This is Clash of the Castle, and we are set for some action on behalf of SmackDown. The bell has sounded. We are underway. McIntyre trying to come out hot, or inside steps him, and down goes Drew. And what did we talk about on Friday Night SmackDown 48 hours ago? McIntyre better not come into this looking to see red too much better not let his anger and frustration get the best of him because randy orton may just want that out of mcintyre nonetheless mcintyre no collar and elbow tie up no feeling out process tonight he knows randy orton very well knows the mind games knows the game plan knows the arsenal these men have been to war in the past they're ready to do it again randy orton however you got to believe he is coming in with some kind of strategy after sitting back and watching how McIntyre retained his title against Edge, against AJ Styles, Austin Theory, John Cena, Braun Breaker, and even himself throughout this year. What is Orton going to throw at McIntyre that the Warrior has not seen yet? Of course, Randy Orton may argue that he has an X Factor and the three most dangerous letters in WWE, that being the RKO that has left McIntyre laying on numerous occasions over the last five weeks. You gotta wonder what the condition of McIntyre is. As we mentioned just 48 hours ago on SmackDown, the shot with the baseball bat over the head, Randy Orton following that up with an RKO on top of those steel equipment boxes. Orton got the last laugh on SmackDown, but will he get the last laugh tonight? and taking things to the outside. See Randy Orton giving McIntyre a bit of what he, what he was expecting almost out of Drew, and that's just pushing pedal to the metal. No waste in motion. Randy Orton looking to become World Heavyweight Champion once again here tonight, a man who has already had a Hall of Fame career, but ever since he was forced to join Friday Night SmackDown back in the spring, he has had one goal, and that's getting back to the top of the mountain. Randy Orton has obviously picked up some victories over the last few weeks, defeating Rey Mysterio in the season premiere of SmackDown, Dominic Mysterio two weeks ago. Now he gets the world champion tonight who has just been on another level than anybody in world wrestling entertainment this year. Randy Orton, remember, he was forced to join Friday Night SmackDown after a Hell in a Cell loss back at Backlash, which was a loser leaves all matchup. A situation where the WWE title is on the line and a situation that only happened because of how destructive Randy, War Randy Orton excuse me, was this time last year bleeding into the beginning of 2023 as the WWE Champion on Raw. Take nothing away from Orton at this stage in his career, just as dangerous as ever and is very much a viable contender to take down McIntyre. Nonetheless, this is 
A near homecoming for Drew McIntyre tonight, just seven hours away from where we will be less than two weeks from now for Friday Night SmackDown in Scotland, McIntyre's homeland. I'd imagine Drew is looking to return home as the World Heavyweight Champion. Randy Orton looking to spoil that homecoming for Drew. And McIntyre again, seeing a little bit of red tonight. A lot of enthusiasm out of McIntyre. A lot of aggression out of the champion. Goes for the tomahawk chop, miscalculates it, and now Randy Orton takes advantage, and that is what McIntyre really needs to be careful of. You do not see Drew making many mistakes, especially in his world championship defenses. If McIntyre makes one too many, Orton's gonna strike, and it's gonna spell the end of Drew's illustrious reign as champion. Orton again, back out on the outside, and a hangman swinging neck breaker, and Drew goes down to the floor of Principality Stadium. Never count out Drew, as we mentioned. We have seen him with his back up against the wall, whether it was against Seth Rollins at WrestleMania, John Cena, even the young Braun Breaker, Edge, Randy Orton, Austin Theory, Styles, all these men that McIntyre has been in the ring with this year, all viable challengers, all people who could have easily beaten Drew McIntyre, but at the end of the day, McIntyre just wanted it more. Had that second, third gear that his opponents didn't have, was able to rise from the ashes like a phoenix and retain his world title. That is what McIntyre has made success of in 2023, and he's hoping to do the same tonight. Randy Orton coming alive there, picking up the pace, and McIntyre feels the brunt of it. And Orton not going for the cover. An unintentional nod of respect, realizing McIntyre still has life left in him. Heads to the top and drops an axe hammer of his own. And now the cover to win the world title. Not just yet, McIntyre still alive. A little bit of frustration out of Orton there, but he better realize who he's in the ring with. Orton cannot let his want, his greed to become world champion take him off focus tonight. McIntyre surely won't mind, and he'll take advantage as Orton was second-guessing himself, almost trying to recalibrate a strategy. And Drew took advantage, now the world champion starting him out some momentum. Now McIntyre with the strength advantage, nice Michinuku driver, dead center of the canvas. No cover just yet. Alex for the lariat that knocks Randy Orton on his ass. Goes for the boot, McIntyre. Got to slow down there, Orton finds a window of opportunity, and just once again, McIntyre's momentum comes to a screeching halt. Drew has been a little overzealous in this contest. You got to call it what it is. Respect is there, champion for a reason. Randy Orton wants McIntyre to make a mistake, and so far, I think Drew is starting to play into that. Never count out the champion like we mentioned. He got to acknowledge that he's got to be careful, especially in there with a master manipulator of mind games like Orton. However, off the spine buster, only a one count. Has Orton played his cards right? Does he have McIntyre in a state that nobody has had him in throughout his world title reign? Again, Drew ragdoll at Orton off the top. And now McIntyre scales the ropes. Uncharacteristic by the world champion. This is what we're talking about. Luckily, it works out. McIntyre drops the elbow of the challenger into the cover. But Randy Orton is still in this fight. McIntyre throwing some caution in the win that time. High stakes, works out, high reward. But you got to acknowledge the fact that McIntyre very rarely heads up to the top rope. Maybe it's almost a... And the flip side, an unintentional nod of respect, realizing he's got to dig down deep to take care of Orton. Meanwhile, Orton sees window. And has got McIntyre in a precarious situation. DDT, signature out of the arsenal of the Apex Predator. McIntyre, oh no, might have been out, but Orton's going to ensure. RKO! That's it. New world champion in Cardiff. Not just yet, McIntyre kicks out. The world champion comes alive. Orton went for the combination. Didn't waste any time going for that 
or I should say, didn't waste time going for the pinfall after the DDT. Elected for the RKO. However, Drew McIntyre still in the World Championship fight. Oh, wait a minute now. The hell has Randy Orton got in mind as McIntyre is rolled to the outside. Orton now being uncharacteristic and drops an axe hammer that works out for him. You know, Orton's starting to go to that place, come absolutely unglued, just trying to beat the hell out of the Scottish warrior Drew McIntyre. Randy Orton, oh my goodness. Randy Orton is willing to turn this thing into a straight beat down, cold hearted one at that. If need be, to leave with the big gold belt. McIntyre might have survived that RKO, but how much is left? Now, wait a minute. Now what? Orton, power bomb on the apron. Oh, swings out with it, and McIntyre might have just exploded a shoulder on the edge of the ring. Right underneath those ring skirts, ladies and gentlemen, are steel pipes that hold this ring together, and McIntyre just went shoulder first right into him. The champion, oh, wait a minute, somehow springing to his feet, and McIntyre. How the hell is he coming alive right now? This is what we talked about. McIntyre just has that second or third gear that a lot of superstars don't have. Third gear or not, Randy Orton still has got the champion hurt. And once again, the momentum taken out from the sales. And Orton's looking to go for a second RKO. There it is! Orton's going to do it! McIntyre still in it. You have got to be kidding. The second RKO does not do the trick. McIntyre trying to get back into this. Back against the wall. Going to start throwing lefts and rights. And Orton knocks McIntyre back down to the canvas. Drew is surviving, but he is not thriving. And Randy Orton's in control, at least for the moment. The world champion in desperate need of some offense. Down goes Orton. McIntyre has survived one RKO. He has survived two RKO. You can't tell me if Orton hits a third one, McIntyre's going to be able to come alive. There's just absolutely no way. McIntyre knocks Orton down again. There is a sense of urgency in the eyes of the world champion right now. Do or die. He cannot allow Randy Orton to get back into this thing. Orton thrown to the outside. McIntyre, like a dragon through the sky, soars down and crushes Randy Orton at ringside. That fire-breathing son of a bitch, Drew McIntyre, with his heart still pumping and blood flowing through the veins, looking to retain the world championship tonight in a sold-out Principality Stadium. And Orton, counter. And McIntyre down again. This is what the world title is all about. But who's got enough left in the tank as Randy Orton takes his eye off the ball? Dare I say a rookie mistake out of the future Hall of Famer. He cannot allow McIntyre that window of chance. Huge belly to belly sends Orton for a ride. Orton needing to use the ropes to get to his feet. Look how desperate Orton is to keep fighting through the pain. Once again, we are back inside the ring till I hear a clash at the castle with a situation of the pencil of momentum swinging back and forth. Orton goes, McIntyre goes. Now Orton with the reverse Boston on the World Heavyweight Champion. McIntyre may just pass out from the pain here and unintentionally give up the World Heavyweight Championship. McIntyre's got to be hurting right now. Remember that power bomb on the apron and the swing into the steel. McIntyre, Claymore, how the hell did he just pop up with that? Randy Orton kicks out. You have got to be kidding me. McIntyre with a Claymore kick. Oh my goodness. Cardiff Wales is in disbelief. McIntyre's in disbelief. Orton's bell is rung on the outside of the ring unless the matchup rolls on. 
This is what being the face of SmackDown, being one of the premier superstars of world wrestling entertainment is all about. Do you want to be the man? Do you want to be the world champion? We'll prove it when the lights are all bright. Orton back inside the ring, but does not get the result he's hoping for. Speaks too soon as Orton pulls the rug out from underneath the feet. And McIntyre, again, back and forth. Couple haymakers there. These guys gonna start throwing live rounds if need be. And there's the reverse. Down goes Orton. Man, what is it gonna take? We have seen the best of these two men in this matchup, but they're still fighting. Orton's down, McIntyre now heads to the middle rope. Big time leg drop, holy hell. The tree trunk legs of McIntyre coming down on the windpipe of the Viper. And now McIntyre goes for a Kimura lock. Uncharacteristic, but desperate is the champion. Dig it down deep in the bag of tricks, but Randy Orton has done his homework. Rolls out from it, and a Luthez. Randy Orton. Oh, wait a minute, hold up, hold that thought, cover here. And McIntyre kicks out. One thing we have seen throughout this match, we talked about how McIntyre's got that second or third gear. Randy Orton is matching Drew McIntyre's energy throughout this matchup. Somehow, someway, Orton sends McIntyre crushing to the outside and randy orton again is meeting drew mcintyre at the dance second third gear for the viper tonight tooth and nail battle over the world heavyweight championship dare i say mcintyre's had some tough battles throughout this reign but this has absolutely been the toughest world titles on the line who is going to outlast the other as once again McIntyre's now trying to get the momentum on his side of the playing field. Orton back inside the ring. McIntyre hangs him up on the ropes momentarily. See the pace starts to slow down a little bit as fatigue sets in as if it didn't set in a few minutes ago. It's certainly set in now, but endurance is running low. Tanks are getting close to E. One final blow. Whether it be another Claymore or a third RKO, you gotta believe that one final shot, whoever gets it in, is gonna leave Cardiff Wales as the World Heavyweight Champion. Warren mouthing off to McIntyre, almost telling him just to stay down, give up, live to fight another day, and give me the World Heavyweight title. Tell you what. No matter the winner, Cardiff Wales is getting a fight of a lifetime between Orton and McIntyre tonight. Orton wanted this world title match for months on end. Not looking to see it slip through his fingers. Orton hung up against the ropes and Drew McIntyre looking to stomp out the life of the Viper. And a Glasgow kiss out of nowhere. The same headbutt that retained the championship over AJ Styles last month on SmackDown, but Randy Orton counters. How the hell is Orton still in this? Glasgow kiss, and moments later, Orton's on top. And now the cover for a new world champion. Not just yet. You're witnessing a live game of chess right now. McIntyre with a Claymore kick out of nowhere. McIntyre retains the World Heavyweight Championship. It's as if that Glasgow kiss reminded Randy Orton to wake up and fight, but ultimately Drew got the final shot. Here is your winner. That is now three opportunities that Randy Orton has thrown by the wayside. No more chances. Back of the line, Drew McIntyre stakes a firm claim.
flag at the top of the mountain. The face of Friday Night SmackDown. And that Scottish breathing son of a bitch is still the World Heavyweight Champion. 2023 has been the year of the Warrior. And Drew McIntyre is still on top and still holding the big gold belt. Well, speaking of warriors, the Celtic warrior, Sheamus, the visionary, Seth freaking Rollins, it is main event time. It is last man standing. WWE Championship is on the line on behalf of Monday Night Raw. It is up next here in Cardiff. In the heart of Monday Night Raw, a rivalry has taken center stage, a feud born from a wound that was never truly healed. It all started when Seth Rollins couldn't swallow the bitter taste of one loss to Sheamus several months ago. When the opportunity struck, Rollins unleashed a vicious curb stomp on Sheamus, leaving the Celtic warrior reeling for months. Some say it was Rollins' fear of history repeating itself, a year plagued by loss after loss in 2022 that he desperately wanted to avoid. After losing his world title at WrestleMania and being drafted to Monday Night Raw, Rollins' destiny took a different path. He took out Sheamus, went on to win Money in the Bank, and successfully cashed in at SummerSlam to become the WWE Champion. But a determined Celtic warrior, hungry for retribution, was on the horizon. Sheamus made it his mission to beat Rollins senseless, eventually becoming a four-time WWE Champion in the process. Rollins met Sheamus in a brutal clash last month at Unforgiven, a war of all wars that left both men battered and bruised. Rollins retained his title, leaving Sheamus with an unsatisfactory loss. Sworn to vengeance, Sheamus fought through a grueling gauntlet match, earning himself another chance at payback. Rollins and Sheamus have engaged in a relentless back and forth, each trying to gain the upper hand over the other. Now, they settle their score with no rules and no restrictions. There will be no pinfalls or submissions. They'll fight until one man cannot answer the count of 10 in a last man standing match. As Sheamus returns to familiar grounds in Cardiff, Wales, at Clash at the Castle, the stakes couldn't be any higher. Will this be Sheamus' career-defining moment as he aims to conquer Seth Rollins and leave as champion? Or will Seth Rollins himself, the new face of Monday Night Raw, craft a game plan that can leave even one of the toughest competitors in WWE history laying out for good? Retribution and the WWE title hang in the balance as Sheamus and Seth Rollins wage war in this epic last man standing match. The following contest is a last man standing match and is for the WWE Championship. It is main event time, Sunday night, October the 22nd, 2023. Principality Stadium plays host to not only Clash in the Castle, but specifically Fight Night. The Celtic Warrior Sheamus is on a hunt for his fourth career WWE Championship. And it could come at the expense of a man he is absolutely no stranger to, the visionary Seth freaking Rollins. How sweet would it be for Sheamus here in Cardiff to beat the living daylights out of a man who cost him multiple months of his career in Seth Rollins and leave Cardiff as the WWE Champion. Eight nights from tonight, we return to Dublin, Ireland for Monday Night Raw and imagine if Sheamus can walk back in to his hometown as champion. What a moment it could be. But here is the man who is not looking to reward Sheamus that homecoming feeling. The visionary, the revolutionary, 
There's a lot of men we can call cold-hearted. Seth Rollins is near the top of that list. But one thing you also have to call him is the reigning, defending WWE Champion. Earlier tonight, at the top of this program, the almighty Bobby Lashley defeated the Beast Incarnate Brock Lesnar to stake his claim as the next number one contender. But who will meet Bobby Lashley four weeks from tonight in Madison Square Garden at Survivor Series for the WWE title? Will it be the man who currently holds the gold in Seth freaking Rollins, or will it be the Celtic warrior Sheamus? You gotta believe if Sheamus loses, back-to-back -back pursuits of the WWE title. He is sent in the opposite direction. He is sent to the back of the line. That is not somewhere the Celtic Warrior desires to be. The WWE title is at stake and so much more. Pride, retribution, and for Sheamus, the itch to fight. It's main event time for the WWE Championship. Introducing the challenger from Dublin, Ireland, weighing in at 267 pounds, the Celtic Warrior, Sheamus! And his opponent from Davenport, Iowa, weighing in at 217 pounds, he is the WWE Champion, Sam. This is, of course, a last man standing match. The only way to win is to incapacitate your opponent to the point where they cannot answer the referee's count of 10. No pinfalls, no submissions, no count outs or disqualifications, no rules or restrictions holding back Sheamus or Seth Rollins. That is the prize that is at stake. It is Principality Stadium. It is Cardiff, Wales. It is Clash at the Castle. And it is main event time as the bell has sounded and we are underway. And Sheamus, as expected, hot out of the gate, looking to beat the hell out of the visionary once and for all. Seth Rollins puts Sheamus on the shelf all throughout the summer. Sheamus has been out for retribution ever since. Five weeks ago, these two men in one of the matches of the year at Unforgiven in Chicago. A war of all wars is the best way we can put it between Rollins and Sheamus. They beat the hell out of each other on that night. And Seth Rollins, in my opinion, just survived Sheamus. Won the match clean as a whistle, no doubt about it. But it was any man's game in Chicago last month for the WWE title. Rollins got the one, two, three. Tonight, somebody needs to get the count of 10. Sheamus got the opening blow, but ever since then, Rollins has turned the tides. I don't believe Rollins is looking for an early advantage in this matchup to try to lay out the Celtic Warrior Sheamus. You also got to wonder about the mind games, or I should say the mental games of both of these men as Sheamus and Rollins come into this thing. Of course, Rollins defeating Sheamus last month at Unforgiven. Sheamus outlasting both, or I should say, all of Finn Balor, Damian Priest, and Karrion Cross. Three men in a gauntlet match to earn this championship opportunity here tonight. You gotta believe Rollins is looking at Sheamus thinking, if you could survive that, you might be able to survive anything. And Rollins trying to introduce some hardware, bringing in that kendo stick, but he left the window for Sheamus to start throwing some haymakers. And Rollins dropping the Celtic Warrior with an A. What about the recent losses, Seth Rollins Back-to-back -back losses to Tyler Bate on Monday Night Raw as of late. Wait a minute, this is gonna be the first count of the matchup here. Rollins might have called for it. Obviously, this is early on. I don't expect Sheamus to be out this early. But just hearing that count as a competitor, when you're lying on the ground, possibly about to be counted out, you gotta feel almost a sense of urgency to hurry up and get to your feet. And you can almost risk injury getting up too fast where your body's not ready for it. So many X factors in a last man standing matchup that we are, I'm sure, going to witness tonight. And again, the count. Rollins would love to get this thing done in a hurry. That's for darn sure. 
And Sheamus has got a lot of fight left in him. And Rollins knows that firsthand. That is why he's going to look to take advantage of the last man standing rules. Grabs another kendo stick, which Sheamus avoids. I'm sure Sheamus would love a little bit of hardware. Just not on himself as he grabs the kendo stick that Seth Rollins wanted to introduce. And Rollins avoids it. Both men trying to avoid the plunder as Rollins now stacking up Sheamus, a maneuver that he would normally go for a pinfall combination, but of course no pinfalls tonight. Rollins back underneath the ring. Wait a minute, grabbing a damn sledgehammer, which Sheamus thankfully avoids. We hope not to see anybody, even Seth Rollins, for all means, get injured here tonight as both men now got a kendo stick. And who gets the first? That is Sheamus dealing the shots to the WWE Champion. Rollins trying to run and hide, avoid them at all costs. We are seeing the rules of this matchup on full display. Sheamus grabs the kendo stick. Rollins grabs another. Back to the drawing board and Rollins eats it to the rib cage. Over the cranium of the WWE Champion. Anything goes and that has got to feel good for the Celtic Warrior Sheamus. Looking to use a second kendo stick on the body of the WWE Champion. Rollins trying to avoid Sheamus with other plans. Rollins with an enziguri. Man, just the first few minutes of this matchup. Last man standing rules on full display. These two men looking to eliminate each other from future competition for good. I do not like the situation at hand here. But nonetheless, this is what this war has brought us to. Only one man is going to leave walking the night. As Sheamus once again introducing another kendo stick. And Sheamus is fired up in the middle of Principality Stadium. And a second. My goodness. Sheamus is all over the champion dealing blows. Oh man, and Rollins cut open with that second kendo stick busted over the dome of the champion. And that crimson mask is not going to go well for Seth Rollins as this matchup progresses. That is going to add to the fatigue in a very faster way. Rollins avoiding the third kendo stick shot. And Sheamus. Well, Sheamus is like a shark that smells the blood in the water as he sends Rollins over the top. Might not even meant to send him over that time. Rollins' own momentum taking him to the outside. Referees count, but I don't think Sheamus is done just yet. Dropping the cactus elbow. You know, Sheamus, here's the count, but I think the Celtic Warrior is a little bit more worried about inflicting punishment right now. This is a matchup months in the making between Sheamus and Rollins, and Sheamus with another kendo stick to the back. With every shot and every wound that is created on the flesh of Seth Rollins, Sheamus is grinning from ear to ear. Rollins avoids it that time. Oh man, but Sheamus is hell-bent on absolute retribution here tonight. Rollins back inside the ring. Sheamus is bringing the kendo stick with him. Oh my goodness! Breaking it on the spine of the champion. Sheamus is all kinds of fired up as the referee is ready to count the WWE Champion out. Count of six right now. Count of seven, we may be nearing a new WWE Champion. A well, count of eight there, Rollins starts to get to his feet and Sheamus with a double axe handle. And Sheamus went for the full mount, could be looking to open up the wound of Rollins a little bit more. Rollins able to turn the tides. What is so interesting is remember last month at Unforgiven, Sheamus was the one who was busted wide open by Rollins. Now the rules have been reversed. How will Rollins be able to withstand that crimson mask that is above his eye right now? Sheamus gets brought to his feet in the forearm to the back. And Rollins is hurt off those kendo sticks. There is menagerie everywhere inside and outside the ring already. 
And without even a use of any weaponry yet, Sheamus is down, but he's not out just yet. And Seth Rollins brings him back down to the canvas. Little cross face here. But this is actually smart strategy by the champion. If Sheamus passes out from the pain, well, that's a count, and Rollins will win this thing. Rollins has got a locked in tight, but this is a war that Sheamus has been thinking about day in and day out for months. He ain't gonna go down without an absolute fight to the bitter end. And look at that, just like that, Sheamus trying to get back into this thing with Rollins hoisted in the air, letting all the blood rush to the head and possibly out of it. Delayed vertical and down goes Seth. Now Sheamus gonna continue the beat down. Absolutely just reeling in every blow. Remember Butch and Ridge Holland retaining their World Tag Team Championships earlier tonight. But will the trio of the Brawling Brutes be pulling out of the parking lot here at Principality Stadium with all their bags a little bit heavier because of the gold inside? And wait a minute, Sheamus ripping apart the announce table. A same table that Rollins put Sheamus through five weeks ago in Chicago. Man, Sheamus has not forgotten about the curb stomp at ringside that really escalated this whole situation. He has not forgotten about the war in Chicago five weeks ago. And down goes Rollins on the outside. A little white noise. Sheamus is fired up. Clash at the castle has been an incredible event and it could cap off with a new WWE Champion in mere seconds. Count of six. Well, Rollins starting to reel. But Sheamus up on the apron. And a high knee takes the champion off his feet again. And once again, the count begins. As you start to enter the later rounds in this type of matchup, it doesn't take much for that count to kick off. Once you're down, the referee is gonna assume you're out and he is gonna start that 10. And it is on you to get to your feet. Sheamus has got a steel chair. Rollins luckily avoids it. Now on the outside, Rollins dealing another blow to the back of the neck. Seth Rollins. That's one thing he loves to utilize is those forearms, the neck breaker variations, all softening up his opponent for an eventual curb stomp. The same curb stomp that started it all months ago. Wait a minute here, backbreaker Rollins, a bro kick on Sheamus. Rollins using Sheamus' own maneuver against him, just like he did five weeks ago at Unforgiven. History repeats itself. But will the results spell the same? Sheamus is down, and Sheamus may be out. Count of seven there. However, Sheamus is starting to get to his feet. On a knee. Rounds. Look at this. Laying out Sheamus at ringside once more. And Seth Rollins knows what got the job done back at Unforgiven five weeks ago. Went to the well once again, and it did in fact lay out Sheamus. Unfortunately, not the result Rollins was looking for. Oh, wait a minute, Rollins has got that sledgehammer. Sheamus luckily avoiding it. Rollins taking a page out of the game's book. Now wait a minute, up against the announce table, and head first. Sheamus looking to brutalize the visionary here at ringside. And the count commences once more. And we will keep on counting. Once after once. Hoping for a 10. And Sheamus has got another damn kendo stick. How many of those are under the ring? Somebody took a trip to Home Depot before they got on the flight here to Cardiff. Sheamus, oh man. That well, was a simple throw, but it was certainly effective. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, come on now. No! Curb stop at ringside. The same curb stop right here at ringside that put Sheamus on the shelf all summer long. And Rollins makes his way back inside the ring, possibly as the victor of the last man standing match. Oh my goodness, not just yet. Sheamus is up, but I swear to you there is lights on and nobody is home. 
At some point, you gotta imagine, is the referee gonna make a judgment call here? Crash and burn. Rollins is now down. Sheamus is in the ring. A roll reversal in a matter of moments. I'm in disbelief of what we are seeing right now. These two men have came to Cardiff, Wales with one game plan. Beat the ever-living hell out of my opponent and leave with the title. This is like nothing we have seen all night long. We have seen some incredible wrestling action inside of that ring. This is beyond the means of a professional wrestling match. This is war, ladies and gentlemen. And Sheamus is now using that steel chair on the body of the WWE Champion. The flesh is not meant to come in steel with that kind of force. Rollins brought to his feet. Not by will, but by force of Celtic Warrior. Now once again, Rollins brought to his feet. Sheamus not getting, getting what he was hoping that time. Counter by Seth as the fight is now taken back inside the squared circle. And Rollins with a kick right to the chest. And remember, that is the same kick that Rollins used to defeat Sheamus all the way back in June when they met in the first round of the King of the Ring. The same night Rollins curb stomps Sheamus at ringside to escalate this whole rivalry. Rollins is not afraid to just break things down into a fisticuffs battle. Which is unbelievable to say, considering he's in there with somebody of the caliber of Sheamus. But obviously, Rollins confident in his abilities. He's beaten Sheamus in the past. It's without a doubt. As clean as a whistle at Unforgiven. But nonetheless, it is last man standing tonight. And a 10 count might take longer than a three count. I mean, that obviously goes without saying. But in this case, a little bit of a different situation with the weapons involved, no holds barred. And no matter what Rollins is throwing at Sheamus right now, Sheamus keeps getting up. And now Rollins is the one sent to the outside. Oh, wait a minute, Sheamus is scaling the ropes. Rollins on spaghetti legs. Sheamus like a wild coyote out of the air, taking down Rollins. Unorthodox dive, but it gets the result. Rollins just getting taken out by that 240 pounder, whatever Celtic Warrior Sheamus is. They're getting sent to the barricade. And these guys making their way in the aisle of Principality Stadium. What a live premiere event it has been. You remember four weeks from tonight, we we're gonna be back in the States, Madison Square Garden, New York City. Survivor Series, where one of these men will defend the WWE title against the almighty Bobby Lashley. My God, the running head start by Sheamus. That's a knockout blow any day of the week, twice on Sunday. As now Rollins elevated and slammed down to the floor, might have caught some of the concrete. And somehow, even at this stage in the match, look how fired up Sheamus seems to be. Cardiff Wales behind him, his hometown of Dublin, Ireland. Eight nights from now for Monday Night Raw, the road to Survivor Series set to kick off tomorrow. Sheamus wants the WWE title. And he means necessary to do it. Yet somehow Rollins is still reeling and Sheamus almost savors at the fact that he gets to inflict more punishment on the visionary. Seth Rollins brought to his feet and sent right into the steel steps. Nothing pretty about that, certainly effective. And Rollins has come in contact with a lot of the weaponry in this matchup. Steel chairs, three kendo sticks that have been broken on the flesh of the champion. The steel steps moments ago, which now Sheamus feels the same wrath. And Rollins once again, Heads back inside the squared circle, seemingly where Seth wants to keep this fight. And it's almost as if Sheamus is the one bringing things around Cardiff, Wales. And look at the carnage. Looks like a car wreck at ringside. Sheamus has picked up another kendo stick. Meanwhile, Rollins is heading back underneath the ring. He's got a baseball bat, but Sheamus deals the home run blow as he's swinging for the fences with that kendo stick. Again over the skull. 
And Rollins with a counter to the rib cage. There is going to be welts all over the flushes of the Celtic Warrior and the Revolutionary. This is the type of match that changes your career. You are never the same after this kind of fight. Oh, and Rollins sent right into the announce table. Luckily, whatever Sheamus had in mind, Rollins was able to avoid, but Sheamus is still throwing deadly blows once again on the shoulders, looking for a little white noise at ringside. And will that do it? Wait a minute, Sheamus not interested in the count just yet. Who's he got in mind here? Wait a minute. To the announce table, Sheamus' attention goes. All is fair in love and war as Sheamus sends Seth Rollins crashing through the announce table. The roof is going to blow off Principality Stadium. Cardiff Wales has come alive and Seth Rollins' WWE Championship reign may be going up in smoke. Count of seven. Rollins is out. Oh my goodness. Count of eight, and Rollins is stirring. Barely. Unbalanced, unaware of his surroundings, but somehow Seth Rollins is still in this match. I am absolutely in all of what we are seeing. Rollins might have been lying in wait. He might have just goaded Sheamus in. Knee right to the jaw, and now Sheamus, in a matter of a second, is down at ringside. Sheamus trying to shake off the cobwebs. Rollins is in the ring. Sheamus is standing off with the champion, and Rollins over the top. You know, we said in McIntyre versus Orton's battle moments ago that it was going to come down to the final blow, and it did with the Claymore kick. That may be the same thing here. Who is going to get that one final shot on the battlefield, outlast the other, and be the last man standing? It might be Sheamus as his wheels are spinning at ringside, but he may not need whatever he's got in mind. Count of six. Wait a minute, Sheamus with the steel chair. Rollins could have been out right there, but Sheamus has got his heart set on inflicting more punishment to the WWE Champion. This may be a mistake. Is Sheamus letting all the months of anger and frustration get to him right now? Almost desperation out of the Celtic Warrior. Or is it anger? Is it frustration? Is it the will to finally stick it to Seth Rollins and get that retribution that he was oh so hoping for tonight? Rollins is, he's breathing. His head's moving. He's starting to stir. Referee's at a count of seven. Oh, wait a minute. Sheamus, you could have had the match won there. What are you doing? Sheamus might have just cost himself the match out of anger and frustration. He might have been going for that one final blow. I think he saw Rollins starting to stir a little bit, made a mistake. And now Seth, a curb stop on the steel chair. Sheamus might have just cost himself the match. All the months of anger and frustration have boiled inside of Sheamus, and it might have just came back to haunt him. Curb stomp on the chair, the second of the match. Count of eight now. And that'll do it. Sheamus gets to his feet, barely at the count of 11, but not by 10. Well, that was an absolute war of all wars. But in the end, Seth Rollins is the last man standing. I am in absolute awe of what we just witnessed. Sheamus might have cost himself there, and Rollins took advantage with one final blow, a blackout on the chair. Here is your winner, and still, the WWE Champion, Seth Freakin' Rollins! 
Well, he may not look like it, but the visionary is your winner. The WWE Championship remains with Seth freaking Rollins as he looked towards the almighty Bobby Lashley four weeks from tonight at Survivor Series. Thank you for joining us for this amazing clash at the castle. It has been an awesome night as we say good night from Cardiff, Wales. Face on when I chase like that, yeah, I play so strong with a knife in the back. I'm a swing home run like a baseball bat. Gonna see me rise if you hate on that. I don't play both sides, doing me no cap. I'm around.